a city etched deep in the heart of history. And this action track has its own historic relevance. New dreams come true or what? But today, we look toward the future as the next wave of future NASCAR elite look to create their own winning path to the record books. shows that you must be creative in your path towards victory. Now, they might fail at first. Made one bad. Oh, oh, oh. But fortune favors the bold. He wins a thriller in Richmond. The future is now. This is Race Day from Richmond. Welcome to week number six in the Xfinity Series. Man, the races are flying by just like the drivers are going to on this fast, short track for 250 laps today. And while there's still a lot of time in the season to make a run at the championship, you don't want to wait too long to get going. And why not Richmond as the place to kickstart some winning ways? Why not? As we say hello, welcome to race day on FS1. Happy Easter weekend, everyone. I'm Shannon Spake. He's America's crew chief, Larry McReynolds. And of course, Daytona 500 champion, Jamie McMurray. Short track, Larry, but there's going to be a lot going on today. Finally, short track racing. Race number six, and we're going back to our roots. In fact, we have back-to-back -back short track races. Richmond this weekend, the paperclip Martinsville next week. Shannon, you mentioned, in fact, these are two back-to-back -back of five short tracks in 2024. Ooh. But you mentioned 250 laps. That means they're going to be sliding around and looking for grip about 245 laps. This track <laughs> absolutely has no grip whatsoever, but we have so many drivers in the field that's looking for that first career win, like Jesse Love, Sheldon Creed, the two Parkers, Parker Kligerman, Parker Retzloff that's on the pole. This three-quarter mile track has given a lot of drivers their first career Xfinity Series win, most notably Kyle Busch and Chandler Smith one year ago. Yeah, and Larry just mentioned Parker Retzloff. I, I think we all like a, a good underdog story. Parker doesn't drive for one of these big teams like a Joe Gibbs Racing or Junior Motorsports. He's with Jordan Anderson Racing, and I feel like he has done just as good a job as yeah. anybody every single week. Uh, started off the year really solid at Daytona and Atlanta, had a couple of hiccups, had some accidents, some issues out of his control, uh, but picked it up with an 11th last week at Coda. He's on the pole today, Shannon, and as excited as anyone. And you guys have been, like, talking about this young man for a while, just about the speed that you see out of him. always and fast. Yeah, yeah, fast. yeah, you guys really have. Uh, let's head out to Richmond, bring in Josh Sims, who has a front row seat for all the action out there at the action track today. What, what do you got cooking for us, Josh? Well, Shannon, I can tell you this. There's a number of different topics floating around this garage area since we got here this morning. The biggest, of course, you talked about Parker Etzloff getting his first career pole and opening a lot of eyes out here. We knew the speed he had, but that was a big moment for him, and a lot of drivers were congratulating him earlier, but also several phrases. Tire fall off leading to tire management. That's one of the things all the drivers I talked to today have to keep an eye on how things play out and how they can manage their cars out there there later on today. Now coming up in just a little bit, I'm going to catch up with a two-time Richmond winner and Justin Allgaier to see if he's got something up his sleeve to get a third, as well as talk with SVG and Austin Hill after the little dust-up at Coda last week to see if things are good between the two or if anything's going to play out in the future, Shannon. Ooh, I'm going to stick around to watch that. Well, I have Ooh. to stick around to, to host the show, but hopefully everyone at home sticks around for that. we got five races this season, four different winners. Austin Hill, of course, won the first two. John Hunter Nemechek one Las Vegas. Chandler Smith, who we'll talk to a little bit later in the show. Uh, Phoenix and Kyle Larson, who will start from full position tomorrow. Uh, one last week in Austin, Texas. Okay, we love that all these guys went to victory lane. We also know that Virginia is for lovers, so let's play a little game of love them or leave them. You, you're going to stick around, though? Uh, for the I'm show. glad, because Larry <laughs> and I got nervous. <laughs> Luke, and I'm, what are we going to do? You're like, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> you're going to go love them or leave them, and uh -huh. Cole, well, not leave them, right? Not love Anyways. Okay. Okay. Cole Custer. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with love him on Cole Custer. It's just been it's been a great year for him. He's obviously last year's champ. If you look, it's three straight top fives, and, and it's at a mile and a half track, it's at a short track, and it's at a road course. He's been really consistent, has been good at just about any type track. And listen, today is a track that he's been able 
to win at back in 2019. So I like him today. Larry, we're going to go Riley Herbst for you. You're going to love him or leave him? I hate leaving anybody on Easter weekend, <laughs> but I'm going to leave Riley Herbst. He qualified 14th. He started off with six at Daytona, fifth at Vegas, but now back to back 24th at Phoenix, 34th at Coda. He has only led 10 laps in these first five races. He has run inside the top five this year more than any driver in these first five races, but not a lot to show for it. They need to get back to where they were the end of last year when he had five consecutive top fives, including the win at Vegas. That's where he needs to get back to. Jamie, Sheldon Creed. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be with Larry and Debbie down here. I'm going to leave Sheldon Creed as much as I hate to. Uh, hasn't been quite as consistent. You know, we talked about all the second place finishes that Sheldon has had. He's had eight of them. But if you look to the last three races, 26th or worse, Richmond actually hasn't been a great track for him. He's qualified back in 20th today. But on a good note, he is with Joe Gibbs Racing, an organization that's won more at Richmond than anyone else. So maybe today they can get back on track. Yeah, they are pretty good at Richmond, mm -hmm. aren't they? Uh, Larry, Parker Kligerman. I am going to love Parker Kligerman. Good qualifying run today, qualified ninth. Didn't have a top 10 finish in the first three races. Eighth at Phoenix, last week on the road course, finished fifth, even won a stage last week. So he is trending the right direction, sitting seventh in the points. Could that first career win be near for Parker Kligerman? Oh. I see it trending the right way. We got a lot of young drivers in the field who hope that first win come today. <laughs> right. And they're loving Richmond when they leave them today. Uh, look at the starting lineup for the first five rows of today's race. We mentioned Parker Retzloff on the pole, Brandon Jones next to him, uh, defending series champion Cole Custer. Chandler Smith, who we'll talk to later in the show. Justin Allgaier, we'll also hear from him. Corey Heim, Almeninger Love, Parker Kligerman, and Eric Almirola. That is your top 10 starting in Richmond. Here's what's coming up on our show. The veterans of the Xfinity Series, Justin Allgaier, he's going to walk and talk with Josh Sims about the challenges of a long season and, of course, seeking that first championship. And then Chandler Smith, he won at Richmond one year ago. He definitely has his sights set on another one today. Plus, we're going to flash back to last week's battle in Austin in between Austin Hill and Shane Van Gisbergen. Do not want to miss that. It's coming up on race day. Always been called the action track, and we're going to see a lot of action on this Saturday. Who's it going to be? It's go time. I like hunt you down, but we're going to be doing some Easter egg hunts tomorrow because, of course, it is the Easter holiday weekend. It's a time for family, church, racing, and, of course, candy. You know, it wasn't that long ago that drivers in today's race were running around with other kids on Easter egg hunts. <laughs> so we wanted to know what their favorite candy is or was, and we asked them. Happy Easter, everybody. Let's go race them. I don't know what I don't even know what's considered Easter candy, honestly. I like to eat some candy, so. Ooh, favorite Easter candy would have to be the chocolate eggs. Love those. Would definitely be those like cream eggs that you can get at Target. Like those are 100 percent my favorite thing. I like Starburst uh, jelly beans. They're uh, they're probably my favorite. I'm looking forward to some of the chocolate though. I'm a big chocolate guy, so to me, anything, anything that was chewy and sour. Probably Skittles. That's why I drink the C4 Skittles flavor. I like uh, that's like those fruity flavors, what I enjoy. I guess I'm gonna have to go with, with Snickers. If you ever feeling down, eat a Snickers. Are you a man of the peeps? Uh, I am not a fan of those, no. 1,000% not a peeps person, can't stand them. Absolutely not, no. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of the peeps. Sour, chewy candy, that's it. That's all I got, that's it. <laughs> with Austin, man. I could mess up some peeps. So, so listen, Austin got oh, one no. thing right. Peeps, for sure. Yeah. Snickers is not it's an Easter candy. No. It might be a it's Halloween trick candy. or treat or treat. Not, that is not Easter. I, I, I'm a chocolate guy, but it, have you seen the price of chocolate? Yeah. Skittles <laughs> are also not, by the way, an Easter candy, no. I would say. What's your favorite Easter candy? Do you like red wine? <laughs> uh, no, I do like chocolate, oh, but you know? just, I'm not participating this year. No, 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 no chocolate. I like, no chocolate. The, I like the ears on the bunny. Oh, yeah, Yeah, big for chocolate sure. bunny. I want the ears. I'm a jelly bean. Yeah. Kind of girl. Yeah. Um, you and Almond really, I really go. like. No, because he likes the oh, sour, like sour, sour, sour. Peeps. Yeah. peeps? 
Uh, yes, I do yeah. like okay. peeps, but classic peeps, right? Not like Yellow, all the flavor. I know what crazy. you like. Pure sugar. It is pure sugar. <laughs> we got a lot to celebrate this weekend, of course. And uh, speaking of celebrating, that's exactly what Austin Hill and Shane Van Gisbergen thought that they were going to be doing last Saturday in Austin. And then, Jamie, they, they weren't. Oh, yeah. Austin moves Shane out of the way. And then Shane returns the favor as they got back around just before the start-finish line. And Larry... Who benefited the most from all that? <laughs> well, I can tell you who didn't benefit. <laughs> Kyle Larson benefited. Shane Van Gisbergen, you will see him cross the finish line in second, but a 30-second penalty for cutting the course. He was regulated to a 27th place finish. Uh, we thought we'd have a little fun with this. All right, tail of the tape. If these two were to get into a Texas dust-up, who I wouldn't want to get in an argument with either of these guys, by the way. Uh, we got big country, Austin Hill, uh, at 29 years old, at 6'3", weighing in at 6'3". Uh, Shane Van Gisbergen. And of course, that's SVG. Just around the same height, right? A little bit of age. Yeah, I think the weight one of those is guys. probably the big difference yeah. that we missed yeah, on there. The weight? I would say the weight's yeah. significantly you got to do real tell tape. Yeah. We're going to hear from both of these drivers, starting with Austin Hill, who's with Josh Sims. I can tell you, uh, Austin's probably tired of talking about last week and then seeing that graphic with them lined up against each other. But, I mean, the real question is, did you guys have a conversation this week, and how did that go? Yeah, we had a conversation, a slight conversation. I mean, we, you know, we, we're alliances. We, we talk on our Monday meetings, and then um, we, we both went to a Chevy uh, group uh, as a group, him, SVG, me, and uh, uh, Allgaier, um, to try to get the tire wh the way that we thought it was for Coda. And um, so we, we chatted. We sat, sat with each other, talked about Coda a little bit. And, uh, no, I mean, we're all good. I, uh, I'm over that. We're, we're, all, we're both over that. We're here at Richmond. We're ready to get some short track racing in today. There's going to be some beating and banging, and hopefully we're up front. How did you feel about your car heading out of practice and qualifying with what you have for the race today? Yeah, practice was tough just because I got stuck behind some other cars, so couldn't really lay a lap down, which running a fast lap here doesn't really mean anything. you got to have something for the long run. So, um, you know, fall to balance issue with our Bennett Chevrolet just being loose in, tight in the center, loose off. Um, so towards the end, we, we got it a little bit better, and then we went into qual qualifying, just drove in the corner and didn't turn. So uh, we definitely got some work to do starting 16th here, but, you know, if anyone can do it, this uh, RCR team behind me and this 21 group, uh, we can get it done. We've started the year off great, uh, so hopefully we can keep the ball rolling here. And if Austin does get it done, peeps for everyone, guys. That's what he said, peeps for everyone. Down with that for sure. Uh, fair or foul, what you saw? These guys obviously talked it out. Yeah. Well, first off, I would say that that Austin's proven that he can can win or run well at any racetrack we go to. The confidence he has. If I work on a team, I want to work on a team for uh, has a driver like Austin. I mean, I, I think his confidence is contagious throughout the team. I don't blame him at all for what he did in turn one. It's for the win. But what you can't do is you can't whine about it when someone retaliates on you after you have moved them. So I thought everything was was fair that we saw, and, and I would just say if, if you if you give it, you got to take it. If you dish it out, you got to take right. it, right? Well, I'm like Austin. I am moving on to Richmond today. Little, I wouldn't won't say I was concerned about the 21 car headed into the day, but when I look back last year, the short tracks were just not kind to Austin Hill. You think about the start of the season, five top fives and two wins, but his best finish last year at the short tracks was ninth right there at Richmond one year ago. In fact, Austin has eight career wins, but he has never won on a track shorter than a mile and a half. After qualifying 16th, he seemed a little concerned about his practice speed. We'll see where they stack up. Yeah, I would just say, though, I mean, I, I agree with Larry. It's, it's hard to, to go against what, what history says, but when you're on the run that they're on, yeah. you, can, you can overcome some things when you get to the racetrack. He's going to have a little bit of work cut out for him today, but I think that we'll see him maybe not be a factor to win, but I think he'll be in that top five. Again. Austin starting 16th. The other side of that back-and-back -back duo, of course, is starting 12th. That's Shane Van Gisbury. Let's, let's hear how his side of the story uh, went. He's currently with Josh Sims. And Shane, we heard from Austin. We know you guys talked. How did that talk go from your side of things? Yeah, it was okay. It was uh, more calm than I expected it to be when I walked up to him after. But yeah, it is what it is. Talked through it a little bit. And um, then we had to work together the next day at the Chevy Sim. But yeah, all good. It was uh, yeah rougher racing that I would have liked, but how it is, I guess. Ready to move past it, of course. I heard that from both of you guys. So let's move past it and talk about today. What was practice like in your first delve deep deep dive that is into short track racing here 
It's uh, slipperier than I thought it would be. Everyone told me it was going to be slippery, but yeah, we did a longer run in practice. Just kept going out the whole time, trying to get used to the grip level, and um, it's crazy how much you have to baby the tyres to make them live. But I think the WeatherTech Camaro is a lot better than I am. I just need to keep learning in the race. We qualified pretty well. 12th is okay. Um, so yeah, just keep learning in the race. Try and stay out front. All right, and you heard it there. SVG rolls off 12th, Shannon. Josh Sims is like our mediator yeah, today, Josh. right? He's yeah. moving in between the two of them so seamlessly. Uh, what do you think about what he had to say? So I will tell you that I think Shane did exactly what he needed to do in the situation at Coda because if you let Austin Hill move you out of the way and you don't retaliate, that sends this message throughout the entire field that he's not going to retaliate. So there, there's no repercussions to, to to doing anything against him. I think the only criticism you would have is that he got a little aggressive. <laughs> it wasn't like a finesse move somebody out of the way. He got pretty aggressive when he moved Austin Hill, but I, I just think I think he did exactly what he needed to do. And Larry, I would say today for him heading into Richmond, it will be an eye opener because he hasn't been on one of these tracks that has so much tire fall off. Well, and he just kind of talked about that. The only thing he has in his notebook, he did run the Truck Series race at the Indy Short Track mm -hmm. last year, and mm -hmm. I think it was an eye opener. He qualified decent, but he struggled trying to do tire management. But I've been so impressed with this gentleman this this year because think about it: third at Atlanta, six at Phoenix, every time time he walks into a racetrack it's one he's never seen but the one thing that jumps off the page about his rookie season outside of the engine failure early at Las Vegas he's doing exactly what I think a rookie should do he's running all the laps he's completed every lap of every race except that Las Vegas race which was not of his doing yeah I mean he's he's kind of been thrown to the wolves if you look at the first yeah. two races being at a drafting type track that's something that I don't care how much racing experience you have that's a that's a unique type of racing a different craft um, and I'm with Larry though I, I just Shane hasn't made a lot of those mistakes and when we got to a road course he did just what we expected he led the first 20 laps of the race last weekend he was in contention when it came down to the end uh, to win the race and and the things that happened last weekend with Austin Hill those are the things that you're going to have to go through and I I, I give him an attaboy I yeah. thought he did a great job attaboy. and pretty good 12th he's starting 12th today yeah, so great not effort. a terrible place for him to start just outside the top 10 uh, coming up the defending winner of various Chandler Smith is going to join us to talk about defending that win. He's already got the microphone. He's all ready to go. We're off and rolling in Richmond. Back on a real race track, huh? Smith versus Smith. Chandler Smith, first career victory in Richmond. How far are you, PR? But that thing is about to get dry. Great job, boys. Great job. Love it. Welcome to the fraternity, Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith getting it done one year ago. Look at his season so far this year. You see the man, the Smith, the legend. Very witty right there. One win, five top tens, and an average finish of just under four. We now welcome one of the busiest 21-year-olds in NASCAR. That, of course, is Chandler Smith. Thank you for taking a few minutes to join us. One of the things that you've been really busy with this year is adapting to the new team at Joe Gibbs Racing. Can you just give us a little glimpse into the culture and things that have stood out to you early on? Um, yeah, uh, honestly, right after Phoenix, the week after Phoenix of last year, we were already in the simulator work and we were way ahead on our sim schedule uh, going into Daytona. We were ready all the way up to, uh, I believe, Texas. Um, so, so we got to work. We didn't have an off season at Joe Gibbs Racing. We were, uh, we were definitely all excited as a group, as an organization with new drivers. Um, just everything was new for, for myself, for them. And uh, it, that's exciting, right? Uh, new is good sometimes, and uh, everybody was looking forward to it. So, Chan, you qualified fourth for today's race. You won this race a year ago. You won the Truck Series race there in 2022. Obviously, you know the feel you need. Did your 081 car, did it have that feel in practice? And, and what makes you so good at this low-grip three-quarter mile track? Yeah, I mean, this is my grassroots racing. Uh, similar to Joey, like I grew up short track racing. Um, always at a super late model racetrack, racing super late models. This is very similar to uh, Five Flag Speedway in Pensacola, Florida, which I've had a good amount of success in as well. So um, yeah, our, our number 81 uh, Mobile One GR Super wasn't too bad. It had a lot of speed. It didn't drive like I wanted it to, but it had a lot of speed. Like I was you know, 15 laps in a run, and I was like, man, I'm about to pull this thing to pit road. It is not driving as good as I think it should be, um, but we are still, like, the quickest car, so I don't know. We definitely have a little work to do. I think now that the sun's coming out and stuff, it's going to play to our favor, 
but um, yeah, I definitely think we have a piece that's as fast as X-Men in the internet. Oh, you got it worked in. There it is. There you go. Yeah. So, no doubt you're comfortable there. It looks to me like you're comfortable at any type of racetrack that we've been to this year. You guys have been just incredible. What's something, though, that you're looking at as a team uh, working with on your crew chief that you feel like you guys need to get better at? Uh, not beating ourselves. Uh, we have all the resources that TRD uh, puts at our disposal. We have everything within our organization at Joe Gibbs Racing to get it done. We just can't beat ourselves. We've had speed every single weekend. Um, and I feel like we beat ourselves. Last weekend was completely on me. I made a bonehead move and ended up getting some damage from that. And that was on me. And we still were able to recover and have an eighth place finish, which was good. Um, but we just can't beat ourselves. We got everything at our disposal. I feel like we're our biggest threat as of right now. Chandler, I know that, you know, this is a racing show and we talk racing, but family is also very important, uh, the NASCAR community. And you have everybody behind you. So I'm going to let you kind of turn around and, and, and have your your squad or your, your crew. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've got your son, Noble, right? Let's let's say hello. Is that yep, Chandler that's Jr.? My son. That's, that's Chandler Jr. Noble's mm -hmm. underneath right now. <laughs> I, I think we're saying the national anthem here or something. I don't know what's going on. I think we're missing out. But, yeah, no, it's great having them here at the racetrack with me. They haven't Aww. been the past two weekends. So it it literally means the world to me to have them at the racetrack, my wife and kids. I mean, everybody else, it's great to have my support system and other family here, but they're my they're my core people, so. He is like, can you please so cover my eyes? Up. <laughs> yeah. uh, enough, down, I know I'm cute. Uh, what was really cute last year was Victory Lane, your celebration with your son, and you kind of like, I mean, this this says it all right here. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Uh, but it's like a Kuna Matata, right? He like lifts him up like oh, Lion yeah, yeah, King. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love my boys are my everything. I still throw him around like that, even though he's getting bigger. I told him I'm going to keep doing it until he gets too embarrassed and tells me dad stop. So both my <laughs> boys, I, I they, they have no clue how much their dad loves them. Oh, oh so sweet. Awesome. my heart yeah. is bursting open right now, Chandler. Good luck today. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. I hope Thank to you guys. See those... Hopefully we put on a show. That's right. Hope to see those boys in victory lane for sure. Yeah. Thank you guys. Oh my goodness, I, yeah, like, this is, I have a new favorite driver in the Xfinity Series. Uh, up next, get to know Jesse Love. He's a rising star, and we'll tell you how things got started for that 19-year-old. Plus, we're going to meet two of the drivers making their very first start today, and Josh Sims will be with those guys. How are they feeling on this big day? Oh, oh the sitter. Pole sitter. How about that? That must feel pretty good walking that car to the top of the grid. I would say so, yeah. all the way to the front. We'll see how he can do out there today. Welcome back to race day as we get you ready for racing in Richmond. Jesse Love, driver of the number two car. So Love is the 2023 ARCA Series champ. This year has led the most laps of any driver in the Xfinity field. There sure is a lot of love for love. Greatness is up for grabs, and Virginia is for lovers. I was incredible. Jesse Love wins the opening stage. And Jesse Love has come roaring onto the scene to seize it. With Arca in his rearview mirror, this young star is primed to make his mark in a whole new league. Love is out front. Jesse Love dominated today. We've watched him court success and come just shy of victory. You got a feel for Jesse Love, wow. But could this be the track where love finally reciprocates? Ambitious contenders vie for the top spot at a track that knows excitement. Might this be the beginning of a summer filled with love? A really fast fuel engineer Camaro. Um, I think it was his fast Xfinity, 10, Xfinity Internet in practice and then qualifying. We were okay. Um, I always feel like our cars are just really good in the long run. We kind of sacrifice a little bit of short run speed. But man, at the end of practice, I started working that second groove, a lane up off the bottom, and man, it was it was on the mail. So I feel really good about it. What's the biggest thing for you as you progress through your career? Maybe the biggest piece of advice you've given on how to handle this success you've had so early? I think just to stay at it, right? Like. I've already started off better than I thought I was going to, and I think now I, I have a little bit of a safety net because of that, so I just got to get a little bit better every week. It's the details. Any stockman tells me every week it's the details. So today I'm just going to, you know, maximize all I can, but like I did at Phoenix, kind of drive, you know, nine tenths like Max Pappas tells me to do, and that should be enough. So 
want to say happy birthday to my buddy Brent Cruz and also say hi to Eli. Just got out of the hospital. Yeah, White Hayes in, in Indiana. So got a lot of motivation today. You heard him say it. They say Virginia's for lovers. We'll see if it's for love today. Yeah, well, there you go. Josh Sims with the zinger right there. <laughs> uh, so, Jamie, do you like what he had to say? Running nine tenths, you know? I, well, today for sure, yeah. I mean, because we're, we're going to hear about, about Tyra all day long. But I, I just feel like every time we interview him or we talk about him, there's just nothing but, but positive that comes from it. I know he's young, but he doesn't make the mistakes that you see a lot of guys make when they come into to the trucks or to the Xfinity series. There's not the, the speeding on pit road. He's not making people mad. He's not getting wrecked, at least, you know, nothing of, of, of his doing. And it, if you go back to the beginning of the year, he, you know, he qualifies in the pole at Daytona and Atlanta, and that's, that's car and engine, and he's going to tell you that. But, Larry, when I look at the last two weeks, what he's been able to do, tough tracks, um, he's pretty much a good all-around racer and doing all the right things. No, I mean, the speed has been there since he turned the very first lap at Daytona, his first Xfinity Series start. But now the finishes are finally complementing the speed at tough racetracks. To Jamie's point, second at Phoenix, six on that road course. This young man just turned 19 years old. Back in January, he always already has three championships in NASCAR Series. He's got two in the West. He was the ARCA champion last year. And I just feel like this young man we keep going. This seems to be the theme of the day. This young man as well is knocking on that door that first trip to victory lane. Yeah, and I've asked many people, including both of you guys, is he the real deal? Like, is there anything that says that he's not? Well, here's, here's what I would say about Jesse Love that I like, is that as I've watched him race different series, he's one of the guys, and I, and, and I can't remember his crew chief that said this, but when it comes down to a green-white checkered, he's the guy you want on your side. He's able to put a car on his back a lot of times and take a car that's not capable of winning and get it to, to victory lane and, and and I think that says everything you need to know about him. It's been exciting to watch what he's been able to do this uh, season. Four teenagers in the field. Jesse loves certainly one of those shiny new pennies in the Xfinity series. But we have a couple of other guys who want to take center stage, making their series debut. Let's meet them. Bubba Pollard is one, 37 years old. He's from Georgia. You see he's got over 100 late model wins, third generation driver. So he's been doing this for a while, but this is his first Xfinity Series start today. What about Taylor Gray, 19 years old from New Mexico. He's got 37 career truck series starts, does have wins in the ARCA series. So both of these guys, uh, a big day for them today. Even bigger because they get to spend some time with Josh Sims, who's with them right now. Well, Shannon, two very different paths for these two drivers making their debut here today, Bubba Pollard and Taylor Gray. And Bubba, I'm going to start with you. We know what you've been able to do in the late models, but this is your first time in an Xfinity race. How did you feel earlier? And you were fastest in practice, so you showed a little something. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's really a lot different than what I expected, really. Uh, just, man, I just overdrove the car, and uh, I just got to settle down and hit my marks. Uh, be a little more disciplined uh, for the race here and, and hopefully we can we can drive to the front yeah qualify didn't go so well but um, it's just part of it and, um, and we'll see how we do and for you Taylor Gray also making your debut what's the biggest and most important thing for you today as you head into this race yeah just having a, honestly a clean day I can't thank all my uh, JGR guys enough for bringing me a really good place to hope GR Supra just uh, you know have to settle in all day kind of like Bubba said just patience is key um, be patiently aggressive didn't qualify very good either um, but I know we have a really good car that can uh, run up front, so just have to like, be a patient all day and uh, be there at the end. Opposite ends of the spectrum, 19-year-old making his debut, 37-year-old as well. We'll see how things play out, Shannon. Yes, we will. Let's talk about Bubba Pollard first, right? Because it is his first Xfinity Series start. But as you saw, he's had a ton of experience. Yeah, when you think about super late model racing around the country, the name Bubba Pollard comes mm -hmm. to the surface. The big races that he has won. And as far as we know, this is a one-off opportunity. And he did. He went out there and he ran a 20-something lap run and was fastest in practice. I know he said he overdrove the car. He also was the first driver out in qualifying, and that is never a good thing. But he's used to these wore out racetracks. Just last week at Pensacola Five Flag Speedway in an Arkham Menard Series East race, he qualified fifth and finished third. I don't think he's going to stay back there at the back <laughs> long. One other thing that sets him apart, aside from racing, he's a construction worker. Oh, I love that. Yeah, you don't know like what the nerves are for him. It seems yeah. to me like Bubba's maybe a little bit nervous, right? Larry said he's he's won everything in late models, and going out first and qualifying is never good. 
for a few reasons, but one of those is that you don't know the pace. Yeah. And so he goes out, he runs practice, they're gonna put the same qualifying trim, air the tires up, and you, you're expecting a lot more grip. I think if he would have known that he just needed to match that time he ran in practice, it would have been a little different outcome. But he also has, a, you know, late model racing, the, the rules are different, the restart rules. He has to go down pit road. There's a lot of things he's gonna experience, not for the first time, but something that he doesn't do every single week. So. A lot of firsts for him today, but he's a really good driver, and I think it'll be fun, actually, to start in the back and drive your way yeah. through there. Speaking of starting, it's time now for the Toyota team update. Let's show you where the five Toyota drivers are starting today. We heard from Chandler Smith. He is starting fourth. Corey hit him with a Heim sixth. Eric Almarola, 10th. Sheldon Creed, 20th. And we just heard from Taylor Gray. He will start 24th. Uh, today, uh, what kind of challenges is he going to face in his first start? Well, un unlike Bubba, he's been running in the in the truck series, and and those rules are the same, right? Yep. The restart rules. He's he's been down pit road. He he knows the pit stops, everything that 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 Bubba's going to kind of learn today in those first couple of pit stops. Um, and he's been super consistent. He's been able. He says four straight top seven finishes in the truck series. He's with one of the best teams. I mean, Gibbs has won more oh, races here than mm -hmm, anybody else. 11. So, you know, I like what he has going for him a little bit more, just because of his. Even though he's 20 years younger than Bubba, yeah. he has a little bit more experience at these types of tracks recently. Yeah, he just turned 19 years old this past Monday, and he actually has a couple of starts at Richmond in the Truck Series. He finished sixth back in 2022. He, to me, in the Truck Series this year, he has been one of the more pleasant surprises. They just keep hitting that ball right down the middle. In 38 career starts in that series, he has two second place finishes. I think he's very close to finding victory lane in that Truck Series. We, I mean, listen, we've, we've just had conversations about 19 year olds about 21 year olds this tells me that the future of the Xfinity series and even the cup series these guys are, are something else to be doing at such a young age coming up after winning eight times in 2023 junior motorsports remains winless this year is it time to push the panic button uh, we'll discuss that plus Justin Allgaier fills us in uh, on how he handles the grind and the challenges on the road to victory lane he spent some time with Josh Sims doing that we're getting you ready for Short track racing in Richmond, Virginia. Gorgeous day out there right now as we get you ready for this race. Justin Allgaier, certainly a familiar sight. Uh, that's not Justin. There he is in the blue right there. He's hiding behind A.J. Allmendinger. 14, How do you hide behind A.J. Allmendinger? 14 full-time season in uh, Xfinity Series, so we are so used to seeing his name on the side of the race car. Let's bring in Josh Sims. Uh, yesterday, you spent some time with Justin, who just seems to be the model of consistency year after year. Well, that's the key, and, and we know with Justin Allgaier, it seems like any track you go to, he is a factor to win, but this season hasn't gotten off to the start he would like, so I had a chance to talk with him about that, to talk with him about a chance of returning to Richmond and getting a third win, as well as whether or not a championship will define his career. Justin Allgaier, he's got a three-second lead now with five laps to go. Oh, no, I threw her down. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh. Gosh, my heart's broken for him. I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been. Oh, How do you mentally overcome the devastation of losing a race that y you basically had won? Just being around the sport for a long time, you realize that I've probably won a few like that, so <laughs> yeah. it's probably only fitting that you lose one like that. At least it didn't happen five laps in, and you don't know how your car is going to drive, right? Yeah. And you got to the end, you showed your car was good, and when you go back there in the fall now, you know that you have a good notebook. You know, when we look back at that race, we have a lot to be proud of. How much does the family aspect of it help you overcome a rough day? I mean, I think you ran a 5K with your daughter the, the next, next day, day after it happened, yeah. She's run about seven 5Ks now, trying to break that 30 minute mark. She ran a 28.08 for a 10 year old girl to, to, to break 30 minutes, that was really cool. When I get home at night, uh, especially my youngest Willow, she's only almost three, it doesn't matter to her if. I crashed on five laps to go, or if I won the race, it doesn't matter. I'm more in tune with what's important right now, and sometimes it's not a, it's not always the finishes. Allgaier, and just because of the powerhouse that he drives for at Junior Motorsports, that he's my guy. As the leader of this team, how do you turn that motivation into success for everybody around you? When I walk in and I see the men and women that work at Junior Motorsports, I want it for them, right? Yeah. Having five cars here, you know, adding Bubba this weekend, that's a that's a big deal. I think this week is a great week to reset and hopefully come out of here with a full finish. I'm not even asking for a win. Here's Allgaier getting it done. You just always know Justin Allgaier is going to be here in the front. The win goes to Justin Allgaier by inches. 
you look at your career, it's almost in the Denny Hamlin conversation. What would you value more? A season when you come out of it with five, six, seven wins and maybe no championship, or a season where when you finally get that championship? I'm very proud of the career that I've had. Could it be better? Absolutely. I would do the same thing over and over again. I mean, I know that's the definition of insanity, yeah. <laughs> right? Doing the same thing over again, expecting a different result. Take me to the if I'm ever lucky enough to stand on the stage at the end of the year and hoist a trophy, those trials and tribulations that I've been through, that it's going to make that even cooler. There will be nobody prouder on that stage than myself. I might be crying, <laughs> but I'm okay with that. And Justin Allgaier rolls off fifth today as he looks for his second win at Richmond and first win of the season. Shannon? Thank you so much, Josh. How do you even put a value on what a guy like Justin Allgaier brings to a team? So this show has slowly turned into who's the better dad? I know. Justin or Chandler. It's, it's I feel a like holiday I'm at, weekend. I'm going to go home and work on my game here a little bit. Those two guys just incredible, incredible uh, uh, dads. The thing with Justin is, is his glass is always half full. No matter kind of what's going on, he always sees the positive side of the story. And when you look at his season, he's had a lot of issues, not always of his doing. He got caught up in some accidents at Daytona, still had a pretty good run there. They run out of gas at Atlanta where they're running well. And he referenced Phoenix where he has a dominant car and blows a tire out. So some of those are out of his control, but I agree with him. If you can have a run like Phoenix every once in a while, that motivates you to keep going. And he knows when we get to a track like Richmond that he's had success at um, in the past. I mean, he's led almost 500 laps here. You see two wins uh, at Richmond as well. So this is a good track for him. And like I say, I just think his attitude contagious throughout that team. For sure. And let's talk about the team, right? What, what are you seeing out of them in 2024? Well, we know it has not been the start that they've been looking for. All teams have had some type of an issue, but I yep. did a little exploratory work and mm. I'm co kind of compared the first five races this year to the first five races of 2023. And outside of the top fives, if you can see, there's a lot of similarities between the start of last year and this year. In fact, they won eight races last year, and the first one did not come until Charlotte, race number 12, when Justin Algar went to victory lane. I know they hope it's not that deep in the season, but they came to life late last year. If you look at the last 14 races of 2023, Sam Mayer and Justin Algar, they won seven of the 14 races, and both of them went to the championship four, came up a little short on the championship. Still plenty of time. Doesn't matter how you start. No matter how you that's finish. It, that's it. Up next, we're going to check in with the guys who are going to call today's race. Adam Alexander, Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano. What do they have to say about watching a Richmond race from the booth with Adam? We'll find out. Tomorrow is a big Easter Sunday on both FS1 and Fox. But NASCAR race day is going to get you set. Tom Rinaldi has a really special piece with Kyle Busch. Plus, Joe Gibbs joins the show along with drivers William Byron, Chase Briscoe, and Ty Gibbs. Coverage kicks off at 5.30 p.m. on FS1, and then you can flip it over to Fox. What about today's race? Well, we have a pair of two-time Cup Series Richmond winners in the booth with Adam Alexander. In honor of Easter weekend, what up, peeps? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, these, these are my peeps right here. <laughs> you ever do the chubby bunny? You know, are you? Uh, yes. <laughs> not like on it. TV though. I not don't on like TV. Yeah, we're not. We're not doing it today. Okay? <laughs> Actually, I did it one time. I it's saw not it. good. Go to YouTube. Uh, it was one of my more embarrassing moments. And I, I will say this track can embarrass drivers because it's very difficult. Was that a decent transition? That was good. That was good. Uh, you know, they say Virginia is for lovers, and Brad, you love Richmond. I do love that. Richmond. You know, we got the two wins in the Cup Series. Joyce and I both do, and, and I've got four wins here in the Xfinity car. I really like this place. It's been good. <laughs> oh, by the way, oh, I have look. four wins here in the Xfinity Series. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, uh, but you know what I love? I'm glad you don't brag. That's yeah, great. I, you yeah, know, never. Just, in my spare time, humble. I'm humble. But you know what I was going to say, and I love about this track is the discipline it requires to drive around here, and these drivers are really going to get tested today uh, because it's the, the sun's out we got a day race and you can burn these tires right off this car Joe if you drive it too hard and so this is a big challenge especially for some of our really young Xfinity drivers because they've never really run into an experience like this before and I love seeing how young drivers take that challenge Adam
Absolutely. This is one of the few tracks where tire fall off is still a thing. This track hasn't been repaved in a long time. Tire fall offs there. And early in the race, that's where it becomes the most challenging because maybe you didn't have the best qualifying effort. You want to move your way towards the front. Well, how do you pass them? Well, you got to use your tire up a little bit. You got to push hard, but you're going to pay the penalty later. And there's not many sets of tires here. You're going to want to stay out there the first two stages. You're not going to waste those sets of tires for the end of this race. So it's a bit of a cat and mouse patience aggression all balanced out really challenging here what's not to love uh, i'm gonna still line from larry mcreynolds there will be some comers and goers in today's yeah, race now let's go to pit road here's josh well yeah adam here with the pole sitter parker retzloff what does this mean to lead the field to green today for you and this team yeah i mean i think it's uh it's one of my favorite places so i think just the fact of that i got the pole and now i'm leading the field to the green and hopefully you know, can get a good finish in stage one and uh, continue to keep the momentum up all day. So I think it is uh, very beneficial for the team, give them confidence, and uh, just have to thank everyone at Funkaway and everyone at uh, Jordan Anderson Racing, Bob Reed Autosport, that they brought us a car as a fast Xfinity Internet, and uh, hopefully, you know, maybe at the end of the day we can walk over the trophy. Good luck today, Parker. Thank you. Shannon? How oh, cool. Thank you so much, Josh. All right, time for a little Stump the Max. First, we're going to look at the scoreboard. Uh, Jamie Mack. We Not didn't get the play last week, so well. I don't think. No, we didn't. Uh, okay, Jamie, you're going to go first. What is the Virginia State slogan that's over half a century old? Virginia is for lovers. Good job there, buddy. That was a layup. Oh. You know that, right? Oh, you got to <laughs> be kidding me. It was so, that was so obvious. I, thought, I was going to say something else. Larry, oh, Virginia is... is known as the mother of what? Because eight of them were born there. Presidents. Great job, Larry Mack. High five. I said, no way are you going to get that one. Jamie, who has the most Xfinity Series wins at Richmond with seven? And no, it's not Brad Keselowski. Mm, I go Kyle Busch. It's not. It's Kevin Harvick. Yeah. But, you know, okay. hey, listen, it's a, a K and a K. Yeah. Uh, Larry, who won JGR's first Xfinity Richmond race? They obviously have 11. Who won the first one? Joe Gibbs Racing. Who won it's the first Xfinity Series race at Richmond? Mm, okay. Larry takes this. So Maybe serious. Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin, oh, 2008. Wow. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, you won it. All right. Well, I guess that's so it. That's over. Yeah, I guess that makes you guys very happy <laughs> that it's it, right? It's all over. Three to zero. Uh, Chubby Bunny coming up after the break. No, I'm just kidding. These guys won't do that. Coming up, uh, we're going to get command to go racing. Plus, we'll make our race picks right here on race day. Guys, getting ready to climb in those cars. Are you ready for this, Eric? <laughs> 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 Definitely was a bad decision. Very, very bad decision. Usually, Larry Mack is the one with some nuggets. Can I have something to stand on when I don't look so short? Listen to this. I'm going to throw a Larry McNugget on him. You just love your little nuggets. Weeknight, 6 p.m. Eastern, only on FS1. It's all about the nuggets. It's all about the Larry Mack nuggets. So why don't we head down to the grid and see if we got some nuggets on some of the drivers that are starting in today's race. What do you think, Larry? I think we should do that. Yeah. There is Matt Benedetto making his first NASCAR start of the season, starting 31st. This is his first since Road America, all the way back in 2019. His best finish in Xfinity, ninth at Iowa, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. Yeah, I bet he's happy to be back. You see right here, Sam Mayer. We talked about it, Junior Motorsports. It's been a tough start to the year. He's going to be 11th today. His best finish here at Richmond is third. He's got a little momentum. Had a top 10 at last week at Coda. There's Brandon Jones. Great qualifying effort starting outside the front row. Five career wins, but it has been 63 races since that last win back at Martinsville, April of 2022. Here's Cole Custer. We know that he is going to be a threat today. You see he starts all the way up in third. He's on a roll of three straight top 10s, all at different type racetracks. And he's a past winner here, one back in 2019. Eric Almirola with his kids there on pit road, going to start 10th, has one top 10 at Richmond in six starts. He made his debut in Xfinity Series 18 years ago, right there at Richmond. There's more family right there. That's Eric's it. down there with his family. It's what it's all about. Time now for our race picks. Jamie, as always, you're going to go first. first. Yep. So I'm going to go Justin Allgaier. We talked about him a little earlier in the show. He dominated at Phoenix. I like that one. We always seem to put Phoenix and Richmond in the same category. If you run well at one, you should run well at the other. I think it'll be his day today. Well, Virginia is for lovers, and we've talked about Richmond giving a driver their first career win. I'm going to go with the young man we talked Why to not? earlier. His confidence, Jesse Love will get it done in his sixth Xfinity Series career start. Adam Alexander's ready to say Virginia is for lovers and for Jesse Love. He said Chubby Bunny. Uh, I, I know. It's, it's good. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, Mike. <laughs> 
pick is Chandler Smith. Not only because, my goodness, what a great He's interview. Your new favorite driver. Yeah. He really is. I mean, he had me at I love my boy, boys more than anything. His kids, of course, yeah. are there today. Uh, Noble and Chandler Jr. plus his wife, Kenzie. So that's who I think is going to get to victory lane. Did it one year ago. I think he backs it up today. How about we head trackside for opening ceremonies at Richmond? Please rise as you're able and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as the Rappahannock Raiders Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, please welcome from the 23rd Quartermaster Brigade United States Army Fort Greg Adams, Chaplain Robert Halsinger. Please bow your heads with me as you pray in your faith tradition and I pray in mine. Dear God, on this great Easter Eve day, we celebrate what was to come over 2,000 years ago. Just as a full body shaking of the passing cars that is soon to be felt in Chaos Corner, so too the earth shook when your son defeated death. Thank you for the sacrifice so that we may live a life of service and transform what is around us. May the teams that stand before us today work as one and may all leave everything you have gifted them out on the racetrack to your glory. Keep them safe, we pray, in your name, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome from the United States Air Force Heritage of America Band, Technical Sergeant Melissa Lacour. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the red Parts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. It's the first short track race of the Xfinity Series season. It is going down in Richmond. Adam Alexander, Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano have the call on the other side of the break. Aw, big hugs. Mm -hmm. Richmond, we meet again. It's a showdown at a place rich with NASCAR history. Five races down, and we've seen a bit of everything. But now, it's time for a new challenge. Here, there's no margin for error. One wrong move could prove costly. Tempers will be short, but your memory must be shorter. We'll find out who can keep their cool today. The Xfinity Series starts now on FS1. Greetings from the Commonwealth of Virginia, Richmond Raceway, hosting the NASCAR Xfinity Series. It's the first short track race of 2024, the Toyota Care. 250. Qualifying earlier today, Parker Retzloff, his first career pole. Can't wait to watch the 20-year-old from Wisconsin go racing. Austin Hill, your championship leader coming in. He's been top five every race so far. And hot on his heels, Chandler Smith, who's second in the standings. He qualified fourth for today's race and won here a season ago. So good to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon with two drivers that have been to victory lane here. They're NASCAR champions, Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski. I'm Adam Alexander. Let's go with those drivers who are off to incredible starts this season. We begin with Austin Hill. Joey, two wins and an average finish so far of 2.4. I mean, he's incredible. I, I said this earlier, you know, Kevin Harvick, we called him the closer. I think Austin Hill is the closer 2.0. This guy has figured out how to finish races. Even if he's running in the back half of the top 10, by the end of the race, he's in position to win the race. He's done a tremendous job at figuring out how to manage the races. And because of that, 
he's up there every single finish. We saw it happen last week. He's got some work cut out for him today because he starts in the 16th position. Now we go to Chandler Smith. He changed teams in the offseason, but his momentum has been incredible. Already won this year at Phoenix, Brad. Yeah, you got to think Chandler Smith's coming into Richmond, and he's a lover. He's a Richmond lover. I'm going to tell you that. Got two <laughs> wins here, Truck Series, Xfinity Series, and he's coming back as the defending winner. And I got to think he might be the favorite for the race day. And you look at these two stats, Adam. These two guys, they are leaders of the pack. Look at the average finish. I, I said it for Austin Hill, 2.4. For Chandler Smith, 3.8. One of the key components always when you come to Richmond, getting control of this race. That means you have to be good on the initial starts and in the restarts. What do we expect there, Joey? Yeah, and something that can happen here is you might have to refire on older tires. Wheel spin on these restarts is a really big deal as they get up to speed. And then you have a open entry. I call it a very wide entry into turn one where you can go three wide maybe even four wide if you're crazy and then it's going to funnel out alpha two to where you can really only be two wide that's where where the wrecks normally happen so it gets pretty crazy virginia is for lovers but based on what you're describing i think there's going to be some upset, upset drivers when we're done today let's go track side get the command to fire engines it's short track racing in the xfinity series Richmond Raceway, this is the moment you have all been waiting for. Are you ready to get this NASCAR Xfinity Series Toyota Care 250 started? Here to give the command to fire engines is the proud owner of a 2017 Toyota Tundra and VIP customer of loyalty Toyota, Dana Reed. Drivers, start your engines! <laughs> It's the first of two short track races on the schedule. Richmond setting up Martinsville. We're going green when we come back to Richmond. Great day here in Richmond. Ready for the Toyota Care 250 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We pop our Fox weather. Right now it's 71 degrees. Practice this morning at 8.30 and qualifying. 42 degrees. No doubt this track has gone through a major transformation, creating more challenges for these drivers. One driver that seems to always handle it here is Chandler Smith. We go back a couple of years ago, Craftsman Truck Series. He took care of business, dominating this thing and driving away to victory. So his confidence was up. He comes back here last season as a rookie in the Xfinity car, driving for Colleg, wins the stage, leads over 80 laps, holds off John Hunter Nemechek, and gets his first career win. A day he'll never forget. Let's dial him up now, starting fourth today, Brad. Chandler Smith, Brad Keselowski here in Avis One Booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. All right, sounding good, looking good. Our FS1 team just did an amazing job showing a video of all your wins in the truck series, the Xfinity series. Clearly, you know, to me at least, you're the favorite to win this race, and you're on a roll this season. What's making you run so fast, buddy? Uh, just the good Lord above, man. Blessed me with a with amazing team, amazing manufacturer that uh, I was with for a very long time. I parted ways last year, but I'm back home now and got all the resources, got all the right people around me, and. Um, this is the result of that, so looking forward to today for sure. Well, we're looking forward to watching you. Two eyes, I'll be watching you all race. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your actual race car. How was it in practice? What's it going to take to win exactly today? Yeah, honestly, uh, the car wasn't great in practice, but I had really good speed, so just a little fine tuning here and there to get the balance a little closer to what I'd like, and I think there's speed with that. Uh, but being there at the end is going to be big here. Obviously, going back and rewatching the race last year, there was a lot of caution there at the very end. There's like two or three in a row. Uh, there was a pretty decent pile up. So being there at the end, making sure you manage your race right, keep up with the racetrack, and uh, give yourself a shot at it. Oh, man, that sounds great. Well, I'll be watching you. Good luck to you. Yep, thank you, Brad. We mentioned the Chandler qualified in the fourth position. Let's get to our starting lineup, the Toyota Care 250 starting grid. Bottom of the screen, Brandon Jones on the front row with Parker Retzloff. Row two, there's Chandler with Cole Custer, who won this race 2019. And here in row three, at Corey Heim, along with Justin Algeier. This is a racetrack that Justin is very strong at. Expect him to be good on the long haul here. 
I'm looking at next row, row four. Look at these guys. We got Jesse Love. Hey, Virginia's for lovers. Maybe it's for Jesse Love. <laughs> We're going to find out here in a little bit. A.J. Allmendinger, always a threat here in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Allmendinger, one career short track win. Came a few years ago at Bristol, row five. Parker Kligerman, fresh off a top five finish at Coda. Alongside Eric Almarola, who made his career debut right here in an Xfinity car 2006, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. We'll continue to look at that starting grid in the pylon in a moment. But first, we remind you of some of the new faces you'll see racing today, making their debut. Taylor Gray driving the 19 for JGR, qualified 27th. He's a regular in the truck series. Logan Bearden is here, rolls 32nd. And 37th today for Bubba Pollard, the late model legend. Was quick in practice, didn't get it done in qualifying. It'll be fun to watch him drive through the field. Now we hear from our pit reporters, and we start things off with Regan Smith. Hello, Regan. Well, good afternoon, Adam. You mentioned Bubba Pollard. What an opportunity it is for him at 37 years old to make his Xfinity Series debut in a very strong race car, the 88 for Junior Motorsports. He told me earlier, just before he got in the car, qualified, didn't go like he wanted, no. But in practice, he was able to figure out exactly what he needed to with the car to be able to correlate how the tires would fall off. So he knew what, ex what to expect as this race plays out. Keep an eye on him. This is a cool situation for him to be out there today. Josh? Well, Shane Van Gisbergen got his first taste of NASCAR beating and banging last week in Austin as he and Austin Hill traded paint in the final laps of that race. Well, afterward, a little frustration from the drivers. They had a chance to talk this week in the sim, and they feel like they're good. They're ready to move past that. So let's do that. In terms of the race here today, SVG told me this is the first time he's had tires fall off as much as they did during that practice session. So keep an eye on how the 97 is able to manage that out here today. Thank you, Josh. And when the checkered flag went in the air, Van Gisbergen was second last week, but you saw the penalty there drops him back to 27th, which was big because if you factor those points in that he lost, he would be above the cut line after five races. Unfortunately, now some work to do as we move forward. And with that, we, we've seen a lot of different styles of tracks. So let's look at a few of the highlights from our standings as we look forward to race six. Austin Hill leading the way. We said that earlier. Chandler Smith has been solid. Our reigning champ, Cole Custer, third, despite looking for his first win. Jesse Love, the rookie, has been great. Parker Kligerman, a nice surprise. And Anthony Alfredo has been consistent. He's above the cut line. There's SVG in 14th. And Sam Mayer got his first top 10 last week, much needed after recording a DNF in three of the first four races this year. When we look at the standings. Guys highlighted in yellow up there, locked in with their victories. Plus 43 for Love. He continues to manage the early portion of his career quite well. And Riley Herbst, even though they've had some hiccups on track, been involved in accidents, they've done a really nice job of getting stage points that minimizes the damage, and that's why they come into today 42 above that cut line. Our race analysis, 250 laps. Nearly 200 miles here. Stage one, stage two, both 75 laps. That final stage, 100. The fuel window, insignificant. The big thing today, how do you manage those tires? These teams have three sets laying in the pits. Let's get some pep talk pre-race from Corey Himes' team. Yeah, appreciate you guys. So, like, they're really our best opportunity yet uh, between me and this team. So. Appreciate all you guys for your hard work. Make sure we make a good package. Might need to tune on it a little bit, but I'm confident we got a fast car today, so appreciate you all. Corey driving the 26 for Sam Hunt Racing. That's a team that's enjoyed a lot of success right here at Richmond. He's had a strong car, a lot of racetracks, but short tracks, as he said right there, this is his best opportunity. Uh, the short tracks, especially at a track like this, it seems to kind of wash out some of the disadvantages of that, that a smaller team may have, right? Whether it's engine or aerodynamics. Here at Richmond, yeah, it matters, but not as much as other racetracks. Corey, one of those drivers has been outstanding racing in the Craftsman Truck Series. Won last week at Circuit of the Americas, was the regular season champion a season ago, and of course made the championship four, and be fun to watch him. Trucks make their return this coming Friday at Martinsville. Pacing the field today, the Toyota GR Supra. Pace car got an extra lap today. We're supposed to run one less pace lap. We had an issue on pit road where the eight car would start, uh, which was uh, part of the delay. They got him back going. Looks like he's in a good position now. Eight car, Sammy Smith. 
Justin Allgaier, two-time winner here, starts fifth today. Proud of the effort, proud of the car we brought here. I'm looking forward to this place, man. I've been, the way this year's going, it's not been for lack of effort. We all know that. And today's a good day to turn that around. Heartbreak at Phoenix, but we know Allgaier is awesome at this style of racing. We'll see if today nets him victory number one of 2024. It's 250 laps at this awesome short track, Richmond Raceway. Jones, Retzloff, front row. Here we go in the Commonwealth. Parker with a good start, but Cole Cusser with an even better start, trying to get into turn one on him. Trying to get position early on in this run so you can manage your car after that. They're going to race side by side down the back stretch. Parker's fighting hard. He wants to lead this first lap. Got his first career pole. He's going to burn a little bit of tire up here. You know it. He wants to lead that first lap, Joey. Doesn't pay much to lead the first one. You want to lead the last one, but you also want to get control, as I said. Once you get out there and you can manage your car, it's just going to compound as the race, as the run goes. This is a long first run of the race, possibly, for these guys on tires. So you want to make sure you manage it as Cole kind of files into line there. Riley Herbst, his teammate, looking out of line. 98 is Herbst. The 51 was Jeremy Clements. And the outside lane on the start of this race did not go at all. The, the second place starter, Brandon Jones, is all the way back to fourth, and the whole outside row lost almost two to three spots. Allgaier on the move, looking inside of Custer for second. I see it was so important for Justin right here to to not use up too much tire to make this pass, but hey, if you got the opportunity to get your nose out underneath Cole Custer right here, he's going to try to take it. I don't know what the payback would be, but if you're betting safe money, these two are probably the route yes. you need to go in Vegas. Justin Allgaier, Cole Custer, really good here. Veterans that understand balancing the car over the long haul. Seven in front of the double zero off of turn four. There's great battles everywhere. Here we see uh, Chandler Smith making a pass here to get back to fourth where he started. Remember, the outside road didn't go very well in the start, so he's just recovering from some of that uh, loss on the initial start. This is our Toyota onboard camera. Corey Heim carrying that today. Six behind Brandon Jones. Got a Toyota right behind him, the veteran Eric Almarola. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what Eric can do here today. This was one of his best tracks, I feel like, in the Cup Series. He's going to be a threat today, for sure, in my mind. Okay, what I heard right there as we ride right along with Corey Heim, I can hear him roll out of the gas pedal. That tells me he's managing his car a lot. He's rolling out. He's not using much brake, managing it through this first stage. I guess 75 laps you are going to have to go on this set of tires. That's a long, long yes. place on a set of tires around Richmond. You see Eric Almirola in the 20 Gibbs car. We got a lot of racing back here. Sammy Smith in the eight, Parker Klingerman on the outside. You know, this is when, you know, you're just kind of stacked up. You don't know which lane to pick. If you're Jeremy Clements, you're the top or the bottom. How do, how do I not get past here? Um, how do I follow through to make the pass if I can? Some great veterans in that mix. Talk about Parker Klingerman, top five last week at Coda. We got Ryan Sieg there, Jeremy Clements, drivers that have been around quite some time and understand how to get it done. But it's the young guy, Sammy Smith, who jumps out to lead that pack. Another teenager up in front of him, the two of Jesse Love. Oh, oh some contact. Yeah, AJ got in there a little bit hot and slid up. And now he's going to get pressured by Sammy Smith. Really easy to do here. When you get into turn three, these cars get really light, get a little free, and you can't turn the wheel to the left. you got to let it go or you're going to wreck yourself. And sometimes when there's someone close to you, you make the contact. Here we're going to get a replay of it. 16 car, AJ Allmendinger. You see him. It's a little bit harder, a little bit too high. Oh. Nice save there by uh, Jesse Love. Yeah, Jesse Love there was probably like, hey. Yeah, I gave you the whole leg. What was that about? <laughs> it's early. <laughs> so we're starting to see the pace fall off. Fastest lap to start this race was a 24 flat. The cars are already down to 24.50, so about a half a second slower. That's a long distance on this racetrack, and that's a lot of speed through the center of the corner and exit, Joey. I tell you, but I've been watching Parker Retzlaff come off the corner here. He's very low on the exit, keeping his car as straight as he can, taking that lateral out of his leg, getting that steering wheel nice and straight before he accelerates. That's going to help manage his tires. See Austin Hill making some moves for the pack next to Jeb Burton. He qualified 16th back there in 19th. You mentioned Jeb Burton. This is the Celsius onboard camera. 
Tight racing early at Richmond. Ryan Ellis right in front of him, the 43. I mean, that's just, it's tiptoeing. You know, you hear, like, you just, you feel like at Richmond, you're going so slow. It just feels slow. And you're just sliding around and just very small uh, movements inside the race car really makes a big difference. So you really are driving on eggshells. There's a three, three wide, wide. Into, into three here. I don't think that's allowed at Richmond, is it? Three <laughs> wide into the corner? Oh, yeah. Let's go it. for it. These guys are racing really hard right now, Joey. And like you said, they've got to go another 60-some laps on these tires. Woo! If they're sideways now, wait until lap 70. Outside lane paid off there for Ryan Sieg as he's able to get around Jeremy Clements. Sam Mayer in the one, racing with Parker Kligerman for 13th. And waiting in the wings, Riley Herbst. There's just action all over this track. This is why I love Richmond, guys. Terrific racing. Coming into today, Parker Retzloff had led 12 laps in his career. Starts on the pole. He's led them all so far this afternoon. 13 out front for the Wisconsin-born driver. Not even 20 laps in. Caution is out in the Toyota Care 250. Ryan Vargas with an issue driving the 32. Something is burning up. I would say, you know, I'm not a smart man, Joe, but I'd say something broke on that thing. It sounds like the wisdom of a driver that's won here four times. <laughs> yes. I think we have a replay here. Maybe we'll see what happened. Oh, you see him go in the corner. That thing does not turn. Oh, and you see a fire, fire. in the left yeah. front. Yeah, I think maybe the brakes gave out there. Possibly. Thankfully, he uh, front avoided front. any contact with the wall, but uh, it's look like that thing has the fire ability to keep car. moving. Ryan's going to do some racing over in Europe, and this weekend driving that 32 partnership between Jordan Anderson and Mike Harmon. Lots of smoke in that car. Something's definitely on fire. Hard to tell what it was. Retzloff has led all 21 Lap so far today, handled the initial start pretty well, was able to pull the top spot away from the competition, and once he got out there, he's doing the deal. Yeah, right before we went to break, we saw there was a plate on the nose of his car, so I think he very much welcomed this yellow because it uh, appears to have cleared that plate off. That, and folks at home, this is why we don't litter. We don't want to ruin somebody's day on the racetrack here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one downfall of leading races. You're the first to get to the yes. debris and pick it up, right? Vargas out of the car. Caution 22 laps in at Richmond. Working caution at Richmond for the NASCAR Xfinity Series with Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski. I'm Adam Alexander. Parker Retzloff started on pole. He's led them all. And we talk about the significance of tire fall off here. You get a caution. Conventional wisdom says come down pit road, get some fresh tires. Not an option right now for these teams, yeah. for most of them anyway. They want to, but you can't because there's not enough tires. There's only three sets of tires laying. And when you think about the two stages and then the last stage, you're going to want to have a set there. Look at the tire fall off. This is from lap two to lap 18. The ghost car in the front, that's the beginning of the run. Look at the distance as they come around to turn four. They're going <laughs> to, that's a lot of distance. You're talking eight to 10 car lengths by the time you get to the start finish line. But you can't afford to use your set of tires, your set of tires now, uh, not have something to win the race with at the end of the day. So these restarts are going to be nuts. Regan? Well, Joe, you guys saw the debris that was on Parker Retzlaff's car in the 31 there. Good opportunity that the yellow came out. They had just told him to keep an eye on the temperatures as they were climbing. No word from the driver that they were too high, though. They were okay in the car when the caution came out. And think about this. He told me earlier today, as good as he was in qualifying, he felt like his car was actually better on the long runs in the race. He showed that early on so far. Yeah, he definitely did. And we talked about how good of a job he was doing, it was just straightening out his exit and managing his tires and all that. But I tell you what, this restart is about to be a pedal fest, as I call it, off of turn four to Old take tires? the green flag. <laughs> oh, good luck hooking these bad boys up. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to struggle to find launch in the Geico restart zone. And then you're going to get down to turn one and two, and this thing's not going to want to turn at all. 
Uh, and that's no. what makes this such a challenge for, for all of these drivers. The further back yard is almost an even bigger challenge. And I can't wait to see what happens here, guys. Yeah, look for cars to be washing up in the turn one here. A lot of experienced drivers around Retzloff. All guard is outside. Cole Custer behind him. Brandon Jones is there. Pretty good jump for Retzloff, but here comes Cole Custer down low. Same thing we saw in the initial start, guys, where he was able to get through the gears just a little bit faster, get that drive, and get underneath. Three wide on the back. Close to contact if there wasn't there. Justin Algar is going to come out ahead of this whole thing here. What a good start for Justin. Just free roll in the top. Nice. Retzloff worrying about Custer down low. Allgaier drives to the outside and says, I will take the lead. Thank you very much. And Corey Hyman, the 26, and a great start as well. Same thing, just kind of rolling that top a little bit. Parker's not firing off as fast as he wanted to on the bottom there, and it just looks like he's stacking up the, the field behind him, and the top are rolling. Where he's going to clear himself down there. Here okay. comes Cole Custer moving up. And Eric Almarola, a part of that mix. Here's the contact down the back straightaway. There it was. I don't think Cole Custer knew that they were three wide right there. And he, he wanted that little bit of room to kind of blend up. And uh, Parker was trying to leave a little bit of room for AJ, or um, Justin Algar here. Yeah, it is. Been pretty clear. <laughs> He's been close to clear if he throttled up and got out of there. And I think Cole was kind of counting on that. Just racing. You see the same thing here. Brandon Jones. Now he's rolling the top side of Parker uh, Red Slap. His his car is not fired off the same as it was when it was out front here. And you see everyone's kind of taking advantage of that on him. Hey, you can't take away from Parker Retzloff, though. You know, him and Jordan Anderson, they paired together here over the last few years, and they get so much out of their equipment. Of course, don't have the budget some of the big teams have, but leading a lot of the race, sitting on the pole, they have a lot to be proud of here today. This is almost a, a statement race for them. Uh, but they, he's fighting as hard as he can to, to try to keep it up there. But even if he doesn't, you got to say that he's leaving a mark here. Josh, what about Brandon Jones? Yeah, Brandon Jones was really excited about the car heading into this race with what they showed in practice and qualifying. Felt they could really control this race, but coming over the radio just a little while ago, he said he's fighting a really loose car. He said it's too loose for him to make the moves he wants. Pretty good in one and two, but three and four have been a bit of a battle for the nine team. The car I'm looking at right now is Eric Almarola in the 20. That thing looks hooked up pretty well, and I am not surprised. This is Eric Almarola's maybe one of two of his best racetracks. Richmond and Loudon just says Eric Almarola all over it all the time, especially on the long haul. And you're starting to see that show up in the Xfinity Series right now. And if you go back to practice earlier today, 30 lap average, Eric Almarola the best of the bunch. That's what you want. Be good on the long haul here. We've talked about it. He's a veteran. He understands how to take care of his equipment. We mentioned earlier the fact that he began his career with Joe Gibbs Racing right here at Richmond. 2006 running a part-time schedule and so far so good yeah Cole Custer seen him making a little bit of time up there in the second lane he moved up there to see if he could find a little bit of speed playing a little defense on Eric here we see Parker still you know struggling on this refire and these cars are just moving up and trying to get air to, to roll his outside yeah, for some reason, the, the second lane here of the last, uh, well, since the restart has looked really good, Joey. These Xfinity cars seem to really like it up there. Yeah, Eric's being patient. You can see he's doing a good job of getting to the bottom, packing air on Cole Custer. He's probably going to turn underneath him here. Yep. Ooh. These are old teammates. Eric was driving at Stewart Haas, so they've shared plenty of time together. 20 inside of the double zero move Al Marola up to third in the running order. I like what I saw out of Eric's car right there. He's able to get into turn three pretty hard in the bottom lane, didn't get loose, and had a nice, great exit off the bottom of turn four. That's usually a sign of a car that's got great speed and a driver that's very disciplined. Yeah, things solid right now. Look for him to drive to the front. And this is the race for 11th on back. Mayer is there, Almendinger, Austin Hill, Justin Allgaier leading this race. He's led 11 laps today, over 500 in his career at Richmond. We're halfway through the opening stage.
you're invited to a Texas-sized party. NASCAR drives into the Lone Star State for a three-day thrill ride that only Texas Motor Speedway can deliver. Busher, Elliott, and Larson battle it out for a killer hat and a sweet trophy. 38 Special rocks the track, and Lone Star sideshows you have to see to believe. Join us April 12th to the 14th for the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. This is more than a race. It's a no-limit experience. Caution is out at Richmond. Brandon Jones had a good start to the day, running inside the top 10. Let's go back and see what happened. Contact with a couple of drivers involved, actually. It's a little nudge here off a of turn four from Parker Retzlaff. You see him down into turn one. Oh, it looks front. like something broke. Maybe. Uh, man, you, gosh. There's something is coming out. Yeah, there's out something there, coming out underneath that car. And the car's yeah. behind him, Rex, so that would make sense why that might have happened. Oh, yeah, we can see a lot of fluid on the track now. Yeah, it looks like some yeah, like brakes in the left front. came off or something. Looks like, doesn't it look like it? Yes, I mean, that's it not smoke. That's fluid coming out from underneath the, the left front wheel of this car. I mentioned a couple of drivers involved, and we'll see who else slides into the picture. Oh, you see the cars behind oh, yeah. him spinning yeah. into oil? 39 is Ryan Sieg. He was the one that we saw spinning. Jones is out of the car. Boy, he had had such a good start to the year last couple of weeks. Some bobbles that will hurt them, no doubt. And prior to that, we had a great battle for the lead as Allgaier's trying to hold off Corey Heim. And the 26 is really good early. Yeah, Corey Heim did a textbook job getting a run up there in the second lane, crossing over Allgaier. Boom, clears him into one. Justin doesn't really fight that too much. Knew it was a long way to go, but great pass by Corey Heim right there. That's how it's done. Nice job, Corey. It was a great pass. Clean, too. Did get a report. It was a motor issue on the nine of Brandon Jones. Let's listen to their radio. Yeah, you don't usually see a lot of engine failures here at Richmond. It's uh, interesting. These short tracks generally are, are actually a little easier on the engine. You, you might run them some high RPM, but the loading, especially at Richmond, is a lot less than most tracks. But what you do see quite often is with the, the NASCAR seal rule, where you have to use engines over and over again, a lot of teams will use uh, engines that have a, a lot of miles on them, a lot of laps on them uh, at Richmond. So they'll reuse an engine here. And hate to speculate on what happened, but uh, just not normal to see engine issues at Richmond, Joey. No. Tough break not. for Brandon Jones. Second caution of the day, 29 to go, stage one. Engine problem for Brandon Jones and Ryan C caught up as well. Tonight, Fox Saturday Baseball returns with a star-studded showdown as Aaron Judge and Juan Soto lead the Yankees against Jose Altuve and the Astros, or the Giants take on the Padres. It all begins 7 Eastern. Check for the game in your area. Under caution for the second time today in the Toyota Care 250. It's a Toyota out front. Corey Heim leading laps for the first time in his career. Driving for owner Sam Hunt, who considers this racetrack his home track. At some point here, we're going to be talking about that winning race for Sam mm -hmm. Hunt Racing. What would it mean to have it come at your home track? It'd mean everything. We finished third there two years ago, and that alone was one of the most special days of my life. So to, to have it happen at Richmond would be special for sure. We know that day will come, whether it's Richmond or, or anywhere else. Sam was a racer. He said, I figured out when Kyle Larson cut a tire and passed me in a K&N race that I probably shouldn't be a driver. Maybe I should get in to the ownership side of things, developed a relationship with J.D. Gibbs. J.D. said, you need to go to college. Sam did, VCU, right here in Richmond, Virginia, and has done a great job of building this program. A.J. Allmendinger, 11th under caution. Listen in. 
I mean, I'm just free falling right now. It's miserable to drive, but I got you. I'm afraid of getting wrecked, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm always going to fight for you, bud, but this is just awful how slow we are. All right, let's, let's pit. Whoa. That's an option. Yeah, pit, pit road's still closed at the moment, so we, we haven't had the opportunity to see if they're going to do that. But you see right there, 26 laps to go in the stage. That's, uh, boy, you're, you're going to go back green, let's say maybe 22-ish, 20 to 22 laps to go in the stage. What do you do at the end of the stage? That's the question. Are yeah. you going to stay out with 20 laps on your tires for another 75-lap stage after that? We I haven't, don't know. I mean, we've had a lot of green flag laps, but I would say you could take this set of, of scuffs maybe and reintroduce them to the equation later as Lane Perkins has come to a stop in the 29. What happened there? He's going to put a push truck to him get him. Like, I can hear it trying to crank, but there's just no fire. Huh. Kind of odd. Happened under caution. So, I mean, I think if you if you do pit here, you got yourself in a good position to try to go up there and win the stage, possibly, and get some stage points. It's just the You throw the away price, any shot at the race. Yep. The price is expensive. We mentioned the new faces in today's race. The headliners, Bubba Pollard, the late model legend, and Taylor Gray, who's a series regular in the Craftsman Truck Series. Didn't have great qualifying runs, but right now, 21st, 24th. Let's get to know them just a bit better. Hi, my name is Taylor Gray. I'm 19 years old. I was born in 2005. I'm from Artesia, New Mexico. Bo Pollard, 37 years old, 1987, from Sonoma, Georgia. Yeah, it was around um, probably 2015. Um, I was uh, obviously a little guy. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've, I pretty much grew up racing. I've been around it my whole life. Kind of as time went on, got more serious about it and uh, ended up making it into a career. My granddad built a racetrack, a uh, dirt track back then, but we've been racing now for almost 30 years. So uh, it's been a big, big part of our family. Nothing screams NASCAR like the story of these two drivers making their Xfinity debut. One's 37, one's 19. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, it's pretty neat. And, and what Dale Jr. has done with Bubba Pollard here, Bubba is an incredible late model racer that is very tough to be. I, I, shoot, I remember racing him when I was racing late models years and years ago. To see him get the opportunity here is cool. It's just hard to be able to, to learn in a short amount of practice that you have in the Xfinity series. Pit road's open here. See if you have any takers. Oh, we're going to have a few. Looks like AJ Allmendinger. AJ said he was planning Clements. to come. And Jeremy, he will. Clements, yep, Jeremy yep. Clements. So some drivers getting out of balance on strategy. Looks like Shane Van Gisbergen also going to make a stop here. Josh. Well, Adam, you heard the frustration from A.J. Allmendinger over the radio. A lot of things to battle for him. He said the car is on the splitter. He's lacking overall grip, and he needs more drive off. The team told him to come down and pit. They got to make something happen to help their driver out. They're going to make a bunch of changes, add a packer, add a couple of rounds to the left rear to see if they can help him out, guys. So no tires on these cars. It's interesting. They're just going to give up the track position to, to be able to make a few adjustments on them. Uh, so they're not going to come ripping through the field like we thought they were, Joey. No, that's what I thought, man. Putting tires on here with just 20 laps ago or so, I, did, I didn't get it. So making an adjustment, I, I still don't know if I agree with that. Brennan Poole, Kyle Sieg, other drivers that elect to come down under caution. Brandon Jones had an engine issue. He goes for a ride. Ryan Sieg involved. We'll go green when we come back. Ready to put the final touches on stage one at Richmond for the NASCAR Xfinity Series and the Toyota Care 250. Corey Heim, the race leader, leading laps for the first time in his Xfinity Series career. So good when it comes to the Craftsman Truck Series. And last Saturday, getting his first win of 2024, putting himself in the playoffs. It was career victory number six. You talk about young drivers that have a chance to go all the way to the top. He really checks all the boxes. Yeah, absolutely. He did a tremendous job last week in that truck race. You know, there is a, a lot of heat being put on him there by a couple other drivers, and he did a good job managing that race where there's no marks on his truck and ran really well. And afterwards, he said it's, it's Heim time. And right now, it's Regan time. Regan Smith on pit road. 
Well, Adam, he's having a good time in the car right now as well. A lot of guys complaining about different handling issues. Corey Heim telling his team he's just a little bit tight initial throttle and exit, but does not mind that. And keep an eye also, Sam Hunt Racing, they've got over 400 people, friends, family, and college buddies that are in the stands today. If he can keep that up front all day, what a party it'll be at the end of this race. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> if the frat brothers are here, we're going to party all night long if we get the victory lane. And it's one of the cool things about Sam Hunt Racing. A young owner... Right, Jordan Anderson, same thing. You don't typically see that in our sport very often. Pretty cool to see him successful. Saw so Blaine Perkins in the garage after they had stalled under caution. Guys, I can't wait for this restart. The last restart, Justin Algar was running second and outside the lane. He took the lead against Parker Retzlaff. Can he do that again here against Corey Hunt? You're gonna be 19 to go on the stage and watch Eric Almirola, who's up there as well. Another really strong launch, Joey. And Joe <laughs> Cole Custer right back to the bottom again. Not going to be able to get underneath him this time. No, he does like that move a lot. And don't forget about Eric Amarola right back there in the outside of the second lane. We know he was really strong comes to the end of this run. But Justin Algeyer going to get cleared almost into three. <laughs> Cleared almost. <laughs> That's why I'm not a spotter. That will work on the spotter yeah. stand. <laughs> but Corey Himes fighting back here into turn one, guys. He's still there. And Eric's looking for any opportunity to where he can cross and get break the plane of either one of them to try to get to second. I love this view. There's no saving tires here, guys. There's only 18 laps to go in the stage. You're going to use what you got. Let it all hang out. This is where you get the reward for saving your tires so long. You get to race hard right now. How does the balance change on these oh. tires after a heat cycle as we nearly have some contact for the top spot? Yeah, you're definitely going to lose that rear grip, and that rear grip can kind of manifest itself two ways. It's either uh, lateral control of the car to keep you from spinning out or longitudinal control of the car to, to give you that forward bite or drive out of the hole uh, after you got done slowing down for the corner. Justin Allgaier now leads. That's not surprising. Brad talking longitudinal control was something we didn't expect in the broadcast <laughs> today. <laughs> you Al asked, I answered that way. <laughs> Al Marola now to the outside lane, trying to get second away from his Toyota teammate. Yeah, he was waiting for those two cars to get single file so he can make a move. He capitalized as soon as he saw that door open up on the outside to roll up. Hey, let's give some love to Riley Herbst, who's come from 14th to the start to the top five, right behind his teammate. I tell you something I like seeing right there from the in-car camera of Corey Heim. Those two cars in front of him go into the corner and the back end sliding. They are drifting these cars down into the corner, trying to maintain control as they're running down <laughs> each other for the lead. It's pretty fun to watch. That second lane just keeps winning all the battles right now, Joey. It's looking really strong. Two good young drivers here, Chandler Smith, Sam Mayer. Mayer's had a nice day so far. He didn't qualify great, but he's hanging around, hanging around, and in position to get stage points, which he desperately needs. Hey, you bring up, Brad, how that second lane is so strong. I agree, when they're too wide. But as soon as they get back single file, it seems like the fastest lane is still back down on the bottom. On the bottom. Austin Hill has worked his way up to the top 10. And the pole sitter, Parker Retzloff, right in front of him. Sammy Smith is there, so is Parker Kligerman. Still got a great battle for the lead here. Eric Almor is, Almoroa is right there on Justin Algeyer. He's going to try to make the pass on the bottom. Not enough drive up off a of turn four here, but he's keeping Justin Algeyer in check. I think what Justin knows is, hey, if he gets to my outside, it's game over. So I'm going to give him the bottom. And play that as defense so it's going to be tough for Eric to make this pass and finish it on the bottom I think Justin knows he's going to get beat either way at least as far as he's going to drive away from him at this point so yes. his best defense is making sure he doesn't give up the top and they're getting racy and Heim's not going away don't count him out in third with 11 to go in the stage now he was pretty fast obviously he took the lead there Ooh. right before we went to yellow but not as fast as Eric was Eric was just screaming fast yeah Eric just shipped it down into turn one and and slid up a little bit just enough to clear him right there I tell you that 20 we said it a few laps ago it's a rocket ship right now. Almirola leads, teammates for fourth. Herbst and Custer going back and forth. Herbst is going to clear him on the bottom. I saw uh, Cole Custer just wiggle a little bit with the back there on exit, Joey. That tells me just starting to lose a little bit more rear grip here at the end of this run. I think they're all wiggling at this point. That's 66 laps on their, <laughs> their tires. I mean, that is a long, long time.
10 to go in the stage, now nine as they cross the start-finish line. We had one car in that last pit cycle who put tires on, uh, Brendan Poole, and he's all the way up to eight. And the way he's going right now with nine laps to go, that's not going to be where he ends. He's going to keep passing cars. He is so much faster than everybody right now. We're talking over a half a second a lap right now. He had really had a really good car anyway. Then you add the tires to the equation, and that's why he's putting up the lap times he is right now. And the play there is just to try to get stage points. It's going to cost them later, but right now it's like, man, if I could just get some stage points and make it worth it, then that's that's your play. There you see right there in that blue and white car right behind this group. Time's running out, though. Only eight laps to go. What I'm looking at is he's three and a half seconds back with eight laps to go, and he's a half a second faster lap. So using my math, that means if he can get past these cars really fast, he's got a chance even to win this stage. He's got to really get by these cars fast. Coming off his best finish of the year last week at Coda. Top 15 for Brennan Poole, and he's going after the reigning champ Cole Custer for seventh. He's got it. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch him try to get there. I don't know if he's going to get there in time because, you know, anytime these cars start racing like that in oh, front of him. Oh, he didn't need that. Yeah, he didn't need him to be side by side in front of him. It's going to cost him lap time. We call that traffic friction. I don't know if that's a technical term or not, but meaning that you can't run as fast as you would if he had just clean racetrack in front of you because he's got to get through all these cars. Almirola starting to pull away. He's got a one second advantage over Justin Allgaier, Corey Heim. Almost a second and a half back in third. Five to go, stage one. Nobody's having more fun than Brendan Poole right now. <laughs> oh, he's having a blast, but he's he's not going to get there in time, I don't believe. Into the top five for Poole. And you see the difference in speed. 108 last time around compared to a 107 for our leader, Almirola, on those older tires. Some more side-by-side -side racing. Riley Herbst trying to get by Corey Heim right now. Tremendous run late in the stage for Riley Herbst. Corey Heim just right. barely to the outside of Algaier. And that's what we talked about, that defensive play that Algaier was running before. He opened up the outside there. Corey Heim take advantage. Oh, look who's coming now. Brennan Poole. He's going to get them both right here, guys. Two for one. Poole to the outside. Gets Herbst and Allgaier. He is now third. Now that that makes up for where he was yes. being held up before. He gets a, a gift right there where he's able to get two of them without really costing him much speed. It looks like he might be able to get the second. I'm not sure he can get to this stage win with uh, two and a half laps to go. Took the tires. He's going to pass like 30 cars since the restart. A little bump, a little run. Brennan Poole up to second now. Two to go, stage one. Second and a half and two laps. That's that's going to be a lot for him to get, but I'm going to I'm going to bite my tongue here because he might be able to do it. I, <laughs> I don't think so, but maybe. Plus 29 since the restart for Brennan Poole. Good race for four teammates. They had a couple of moments last week at Coda, Mayer and Allgaier. We see a of times at these junior motorsports cars where the teammates have a lot of words for each other. And a little bit of contact, too. Final lap of the stage. Eric Almirola going to finish it off in front of Brennan Poole. Really good run for the 44. He'll get second. The veteran going to get his second career stage win in the Xfinity Series. Eric Almirola takes the first 75 laps into of the race and they're racing for points final spot in the top 10 Sammy Smith going at it with Parker Kligerman best stage finish for Brennan Poole in his career and give a call to Bubba Pollard coming from the back he ran it inside the top 15 at the end of stage one Eric Almirola in charge at Richmond We had a whole lot going on to end stage one. Almirola wins. The great rally for Brennan Poole. Heim had a nice finish. What about his truck teammate, Taylor Gray, who didn't qualify great, making his debut. He gets it into the top ten. Now pit stops, Regan. Adam Eric Almirola in the 20 car. Very quick that first run of the race. Still not perfect with the car, though. Needs an adjustment. A little bit tight. Rolling the center. Wants help with that. The 26 of Corey Heim. He's got a car that's very connected right now all the way around the corner. He's just too tight overall and needs a little adjustment. Josh?
for the one of Sam Mayer. He's a little free on entry, a little free on exit, but said keep the adjustments minimal. And then for the 98 of Riley Herbst, happy with the car, frustrated with the way the guys were racing around him. Said give me four tires and good track position, guys. Race off pit road is big. You want to have control of this race. Eric Almirola comes in the leader. He leaves the leader. Justin Allgaier up to second in front of Riley Herps. Plus two, plus three there. Plus three for Chandler Smith. And Austin Hill, who worked his way to the top ten into the stage, goes plus eight. So actually just outside the top ten. But a great pit stop gets him up to fifth off pit road. Let's try Brennan Poole here and talk to him about his strategy. Brennan Poole, Joey Logano up here in the Fox booth. You got me? I'm going to try one more time. Brandon Poole, Joey Logano in the Fox booth. You got us? That's that's a hard no, I believe. Well, we were wanted to see what could, his strategy on, on what they were thinking and how, how they're going to play it forward. I just wanted here. to hear how much fun he was having. Uh, I think maybe he's having so much fun the radio's not working. I just wonder if he couldn't hear you or just didn't want to talk to you. Problems that on the road for a couple of our front runners. Cole Custer having a hard time getting out of his stall. And Corey Heim with some problems as well. Stage two coming up. The capital of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Richmond. Awesome downtown. Plenty to do. And a couple of weekends a year, home to NASCAR. There's your sign, Brad. Virginia I is love it. for lovers. There's a lot of drivers out here are loving these new tires. I tell you that. Absolutely. Bubba Pollard, enormous challenge today, making his debut, limited practice time. But man, has he done a nice job in the first stage plus. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this. It's, it's so hard for somebody to jump into any of the NASCAR ranks at this point with the limited amount of practice, and you expect to just figure out how to drive this car that you've never driven before and go out there and win right off the bat. It's not even it's not fair to even think that could happen, but Bubba's doing a great job to start here. Ryan Sieg, free pass with his caution. He's back on the lead lap. Big jump on the restart at Stage 2 for Eric Almirola. Riley Herps coming through to second. Oh, Eric Almora switched up the tactics a little bit there, Joey. Went late in the box and uh, kind of messed up Justin Algar a little bit. He's going to lose a lot of ground. Yeah, Justin was trying to time it on him. <laughs> he said, no, I don't think so, bud. <laughs> what a big restart for Eric Almarola. And unfortunately, Algar just timing it wrong. He's going to lose four to five spots. Eric's teammate Chandler Smith taking advantage. Drives through the middle to third. Oh, a little contact, Austin Hill, Justin Algaier. A little turn one here. I don't know what the average running position is today for Austin Hill, probably outside the top 10, but I'll tell you, he has done what he always does, find his way to the front, always ends the day in his best running position of the afternoon. Got to report the restart is under review. You guys see anything here? Here's the restart, they come into the zone. The seven kind of wants to go, and then Eric says, no, not yet. You know, it's always hard to tell, Joey, from this view, if the 20 got on the brakes or just didn't go while the seven was trying to time it. And I think that's what NASCAR is probably reviewing here. I don't see anything that the 20 did there. You know, it looks like the 20 brake checks the field. It's only because everyone else went but him. He just yes. stayed the same speed. And so he has the right to do that. He is exactly. the control car in the restart area. He gets to pick where to go. Let's listen to Eric Almarola radio. We got a report now that the restart is good. Here's what they're saying on the 20. Now the princess. Interesting for sure. That's what he gets for trying to roll me. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> we saw the same thing, Eric. <laughs> Eric's been around this sport for a long time to be in a lot of different scenarios. He saw what was happening as they went into the restart zone. He said, I don't think so, buddy. But in fairness to Justin, he did get the lead. The last two restarts doing a good roll on that. And uh, finally, somebody kind of checked him. Yes, and, and that's experience. That's a difference. The level of what you see in the Cup Series versus the Xfinity Series a lot of times is that experience. And, you know, when somebody does that to you a few times, you know, you realize how to combat that and how to beat that. And Eric's been doing it long enough to know when it's happening and know how to answer it. 
13th right now as we go along with Corey Heim. It's our Toyota onboard camera. They had a problem with the jack. We, we saw a bit of a delay on their pit stop going to break, but it was a jack issue that pushed him outside the top 10, 12th as he races Brennan Poole for position. And give a call to Kyle Weatherman right in front of him in that 91. Driving for Mario Goslin. Always seems to pop up at some point in the weekend doing something we didn't expect. And here he is knocking on the door of the top 10. And Kyle Weatherman is just one of those guys that's really a hustler. He grinds. He finds ways to, to get opportunities and make the most of them. He's doing that here today for sure, Adam. Ford Performance onboard camera, one of our rookies, Haley Deegan. Trying to get to the outside here, the 28 car. Kelsey. Sheldon Creed back there. They said that they had a tire issue on that first run, but it's been a subpar day really for them. Both practice qualifying and here in the race just can't seem to find what they need. Yeah, Sport we got a report. 29th. Yeah, we've got a report from Pit Road. I think Regan might have a little more detail. Yeah, Brad, the right front tire on Sheldon Creed was showing cords on the very inside edge of that tire. That's basically the way the tire leans into the corner was the area that was damaged. But he complained from the start of the race about an extremely tight race car. I got to imagine that had a part in it. Yeah, you start leaning on one tire too hard here at Richmond, you're going to start paying the price. And you know, if you take off with your balance being really tight and you grind it off, <laughs> there ain't nothing left by the end. A little contact here off of turn two, Haley Deegan and Sheldon Creed. It's like we might have found a rock in our uh, camera here on the roof. These guys are battling hard. They're starting to lose the handling again. 20 laps into the stage. The first few laps felt really good, and now every lap from here on out, cars are getting just a little bit freer. And this is the battle I've been watching. A.J. Allmendinger, Bubba Powered, they've been racing side by side, trading a little paint as we got to spin. Caution is out. It's our fourth of the day. Third for a problem on track, making his debut, Logan Bearden. Looks like the car's clean there. See if we can tell what happened. We, uh, trying to see where he's at. Oh, okay, there he there is. Going in the yep. corner. Got a little bit uh, hard on the bottom of the racetrack here, Joey, it looks like, and uh, around she went. Really easy to do in the turn three. You brought it up earlier, Brad. It, you know, there's not much banking turning into the corner, and it's easy to start getting offline, and then you get a car to your outside, and there's not much space, and they're taking air off the side of your car, so you're losing that side force, and as a rookie, we just talked about how hard it is just to learn how to drive one of these Xfinity cars with not much practice. Well, now they're learning how to race yep. as well. And, you know, mistakes like that will, will happen. Good thing is no damage to the car. He gets to keep going. Yep. Patrick Emmerling having an issue as well. 22 laps down in stage two. Almirola, Herbst, Chandler Smith, Justin Allgaier, Austin Hill, the top five. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series Toyota Care 250 from Richmond, a Toyota out front in Eric Almirola. And back in fifth is Austin Hill, comes in the championship leader, has won twice this year, and is on a heater. I mean, five consecutive top five finishes to begin the season. An average finish of 2.4. Incredible what Austin Hill has been pulling off here. Austin Sendrick started 2021 with five straight top five finishes. Kyle Busch did it in 2014. In fact, when Kyle did that, even though he was a cup regular, his average finish was 2.2. That, that's the best through five races, a 2.2 average, right? But when it comes to a series regular, no one's outdone what Austin Hill has done this year, averaging 2.4, Josh. For Austin Hill, going into the race, the car wasn't exactly where he needed it. They've been working on it. The biggest complaint has been he needs drive off. But after that last stop, now he's complaining about being on the splitter a little bit. So they're going to try and help him out the next time he comes down with some air pressure. Look at this guy. He's ready to see some good racing. <laughs> I, I think hope tomorrow's good. I think tomorrow will be good, too. All right, back in the restart zone. We'll see what Eric Almoro does right here. 
You see Riley Herb spun the tires a little bit. Justin Algar squeezing it down the center. Algar still oh, got oh, oh, wow. Parker That's Klickerman. Parker Kligerman, yeah, on the 48. And Big Cole contact Custer into the outside wall. Right there wall. with him. Didn't hit the wall, but he and Cole Custer definitely drifted up together. Yeah, yeah, we talked about this too. Refiring on older tires. If you don't get them cleaned off, sometimes you just go in there and they slide and it feels like you have a flat tire until they get cleaned off. And that might have been the case there. And we'll see if we can tell what happened. Here's a replay. You know, three, oh. Four wide into one. It looks like the double zero got tagged or a little bit loose underneath him and wiggled up into the left front of the 48 and not much uh, Parker could have done there. I see his play was to try to pass a bunch of cars up there just ran out of space. Taylor Gray in the 19 was right in the middle of that as well. Shelton Creed, whatever adjustments they made on that stop, he has been really moving forward. Here we see him battling for the uh, 18th position, 18th, 19th position. Yeah, he had, just a minute ago, we updated his progress. He was outside the top 25 and Creed was right back in the mix. Three wide, four position here. Parker Kligerman trying to roll this, this top side of everybody, trying to get that track position back. And how about Kyle Weatherman making a pass on our pole sitter, Parker Retzloff, for ninth? Oh, gets a little loose down there at one and two. He's going to slide up the hill. Retzloff back in the top 10 now as he jumps in front of that 91. Retzloff started on the pole, led 27 laps early, drifted, was outside the top 10, but trying to regain his form, being scored ninth. Chandler Smith. Justin Allgaier for second. Riley Herbst is right there with him. Justin Allgaier is pushing pretty hard right now at this point of the run. You see him kind of slide in the rear of that car off of four, making these passes. Got to imagine I don't know Eric how Almoros. long it's going to last. Imagine Eric Almoro is loving that, right? He's got the lead here. He's taking care of his car for this next 40-some laps. Yeah, all Eric's doing is he's checking up in the mirror and he's saying, okay, I got about a half a second there. All right. They're racing each other hard. Okay. I just kind of pace it right here. Stay right here where I'm at. Yep. Wants to keep that half a second to a second gap, and that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, Mitchell Sheldon. Yeah, wow. Interesting. Some smoke coming out of. You know, we are just talking about Sheldon Creed was recovering from uh, not the best to start, but not what he wants to see right here. It, you know, it, and he said it's probably, they, they just said it, it's probably the engine. It doesn't really look like there's any fenders rubbing, so it, it could be. Regan, you have an update here? Well, Joe, you're exactly right. That's what he just told the team. They said there's no tire rubs, no anything like that. He said it smells like oil. They're afraid that engine's getting set to expire here. Adam. Wow. That this would is, be two yeah. on a day if that happens, and what a surprise that would be. We've only had one engine-related DNF in the last five races here, so two in the same day. It's Like I was saying earlier, it's kind of unheard of here at Richmond. Brandon Jones earlier, now Sheldon Creed. Austin Hill battling to stay in the top five. He wants to keep that top five streak still going there, Adam. Yeah, he's got a long way to go, but he's done all he needs to in the first half of the race to put himself in position. After starting 16th, Sam Mayer continues to be impressive as they race for the spot, and right behind them, Taylor Gray. Can't say enough good things about the driver from New Mexico, just celebrated his 19th birthday, starting in the Xfinity Series for the first time and just feeling it out and getting better as the afternoon goes along. Yeah, running a good, smart race, and you got to give him a lot of credit for that. Uh, you know, when you, you make your first start in any series, it's, uh, it's a challenge, a lot to learn, and, uh, you know, you always hope that you have a strong and solid day, but uh, easier said than done. He's doing everything he needs to do right here, I can tell you that. It's always funny. I, I remember my first start, and you're like, what do you expect? I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. like, how do you know what to expect? Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Let's figure out when I get there, I guess. It's, it's hard to know what's going to happen in these things, especially when you have no experience on your side. That sounds like a shot at one of us on the media side. So you're making your first career start. What do you expect today? And Joey says, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. That, well, to use a Larry Mack line, you don't know what you don't know when you're right. making that first start, right? Yep. Which sometimes could be a good thing. There's some terrific battles all around the track here. Uh, we still see Austin Hill fighting Sam Mayer. Is, I think they might have been side by side now for the last five or six laps. That's so frustrating, too. Wait, wait, yes. Either one of them, you're just like, ah, just want to run my pace. And I don't want to run harder. I'm going to burn the tires off it. Will, will you just slow down and let me go? <laughs> doesn't really ever work like no, that. No, it doesn't. 
That's part of what makes it so much fun to watch. Austin Hill slide up a little bit in the turn one. You can tell uh, either got a little too hard or he's just a little bit too free. We heard him talking about being a little bit free earlier on our feedback from his radio. Austin Hill, the veteran at RCR. Back behind him, the rookie, Jesse Love. He's running right at the edge of the top 10 here. Having a quiet, smooth day so far. Of course, the two, the team car to the 21. And Danny Stockman is the crew chief for that two team. And Danny's a great veteran. He's been with so many good ones over the years, various levels of experience. And he told me last week at Coda, he's so impressed with what Love brings to the table and spoke to how hard he works away from the racetrack. And when I was in their hauler prior to the race today, Jesse was down there studying the data. He really is not afraid to roll his sleeves up and go to work. And that's why you see the results he's getting. Back-to-back -back top tens. Finishing in front of where he runs in the race. Second at Phoenix, six last week at Coda, and in the top ten again here today. And that's what it takes to be a good race car driver these days. You know, everybody at this level and on forward from here is really, really, really good. And they have a ton of talent. Going fast is just part of the equation. Racing and understanding the little details is the rest of it that makes the difference for a driver and a team. Chandler Smith's been the fastest car on the track the last probably three or four laps. He caught Justin Allgaier trying to make a pass here. It's not quite there, but uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him. Well, we saw earlier where Justin Allgaier passed him on the top, and we said, boy, he's really using his stuff up. Is Justin Allgaier starting to pay the price for running too hard early in the run? Oh, wow. Chandler really drove it in hard there. Jumps in front of him, does Chandler Smith. Out in front of Justin Allgaier for second now. So it's Joe Gibbs racing 1-2. Taylor Gray finds himself in the top 10, so their Toyotas are delivering. We talk teammates, and here they are from Colleg, all bunched together. Get the team photo. 16 is Aldeninger, <laughs> 97 Van Gisbergen, and Josh Williams in the 11. They're racing for 14th. I'm not sure they'd want the team photo in 14th. Well, right hey, now. hey, you know what? It's a, it's a good photo op. <laughs> We've taken worse ones. Yeah, I'll give that at him. But uh, no, they, they, you could tell that these three cars are very equally prepared uh, based on how they're running. You got Bubba Pollard right there behind them. And Parker Kligerman, who's trying to recover from that restart where he got in the wall. Looks, you know, good, lucky for him. It doesn't seem like there must have been much things bent. I, he hit the wall so hard, I thought it would have bent something. But looks like he's all right. Sheldon Green. Sheldon Creed had, had brought his car down pit road. NASCAR had posted him for the smoke. And so the engine issues continued for him while his teammates are out in front of the field. Eric Almirola has been outstanding today, leading 55 laps. There are Toyota top performers. Chandler Smith, who mentioned, got around all guy for second. Taylor Gray in the top 10. And Corey Heim, who was impressive early, had the issues on the pit stop. But he has stayed in touch with the top 10, currently 11th. Twenty nine laps to go in our second stage. Al Marola, Chandler Smith, Allgaier, Herbst Hill, the top five. We're going side by side. It's the Xfinity Series live on FS1. Cracker Barrel was founded on the simple belief that freshly made food should be served up at a fair price. Today, that's more important than ever. So we've got over 20 meals under $12 including all the generously portioned classics that made us famous and the signature sides you've always loved. All served up with an extra helping of care. Eat, shop, earn. Cracker Barrel Rewards. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. It ain't my dad's razor, dad. Hey, watch it. It's from Gillette Labs. This green bar releases trapped hairs from my face. Game changer. Well, it flex this contours to it, so the five blades can get virtually every hair in one stroke for the ultimate Gillette shaving experience. The best a man can get is Gillette Labs. Buckle up and hang on. This is going to be a good one. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes. Oh, I can't you. And family-friendly facilities. Trading paint. We got beauty. And tailgating tradition. 
burnouts, beer, and barbecue. Oh, it'll for sure be a good time, and you are all invited. NASCAR Weekend at Kansas Speedway. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. Easter Sunday on Fox. You're ready to rumble in Richmond. This three-quarter mile D-shaped short track has history. We've been racing at this track since 1953. The best drivers in the world push the limits in an all-out battle for the checkered flag. The Toyota Owners 400, Easter Sunday on Fox. What does fearless look like? Like trading pain with a champion? Find out for yourself. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Closing on 20 laps to go. Stage two for the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Richmond. Eric Almirola has been the dominator, leading 62 of our 127 laps. Parker Retzloff, good early. Outside the top 10, as you see our lap leaders. Let's go back to when Eric Almirola made his debut. And I will tell you that, I mean, there might be a little gray there, and Eric referenced this earlier today in one of our interviews, but he doesn't look much different than no, he did 18 crazy. years ago. No, I, wow. I don't know what he's eating or taking, but I uh, would would like to. Uh, we can't say the same, Brad. Yeah, no, no, I look a little different. <laughs> I can't either. No. Some great genes. Huh. I said this earlier, better gray than gone. And uh, <laughs> Eric still has all his hair, and well, I don't, so. Well, he's looking pretty good. Apparently in those uh, years that have passed, he's really figured this racing thing out, Joey. Looks really fast right now. Sam Mayer up to fourth, making a late ride in stage two. Regan? Adam, unfortunately, Shelton Creed out of the race earlier. We thought possibly an engine issue initially, but what ultimately put you out of the race, Sheldon? I guess the right rear brake was dragging. I don't know, it's frustrating. It's three weeks in a row that we've had car problems, and our teammates are out there leading the race. Pretty much all three weekends we have trouble, so. So frustrating. We have so much potential on this 18 team, and uh, be able to run on the laps it's just frustrating thanks Shelby. yeah mechanical dnfs are, are not your friend as a race car driver and you can obviously hear the frustration in sheldon's voice and always hurts a little bit more when you you know, have a mechanical dnf and your teammates are leading the race that's uh certainly not ideal yeah it's it's you can hear the frustration I mean, that's the raw emotion you think about you know he just got out of the race car from grinding it out out there and he's upset and then someone sticks a microphone in his face. I mean, it's part of the job. I get it. But it's also like, gosh, I can't even get my emotions under control yet, yeah. as frustrated as it is. Because, I mean, this is this is their career. This is their job. This is their life out there. And it, it's all performance-based. It's how you do and how you what your results are at the end of this thing. And it can eat you up quick. Look at the lap times for Sam Mayer, who's really turned it up with 17 to go on the stage. Just ran, went around all guyer. He's up to third. Man, he, you talk about taking care of your car on the long haul. He has done that, passing a lot of cars here late in the going in this second stint of the race. Yeah, he's definitely pretty strong. There's a couple tenths or so faster than Almarola the last lap. We talk about the 20 year old. Let's give some love to the 19 year old. Taylor Gray, first ever start, has worked his way into the top five driving the 19. Yeah, he's done a great job in the, in the truck series. You've seen constant improvement out of Taylor. Week after week, he's more and more in contention of winning races consistently. And, you know, you see he's able to jump into a brand new kind of car for him, the Xfinity Series car, and be able to pick up on it pretty quickly here at Richmond. It speaks to the talent at Tricon Garage in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. When you look at what Corey Heim has done today and the same for Taylor Gray. Mentioned Corey Heim won last week at Coda. Taylor Gray was second to him, so we know the talent is there. Josh Williams is somebody I want to point out. He has been passing cars, started 26th, not where he wanted to start, but he has drove up to 12th, and he's running some really quick lap times right now, guys. I, I think he might be a top five, top 10 in speed. Uh, he's run down Cole Custer here in front of him to 
and Jesse Love to hopefully break into the top 10. And he's needed a solid run. He's had a, a rough start to the season and you know he's in a college car. He's got, got definitely a more capable car than he's had in the past and he wants to show the talent that he's got. And uh, today seems like a good example of that. A new dad. We talked about it last week at Coda. Missed practice and qualifying on Friday in Austin, Texas because his wife Trasia was delivering their or they had their first baby on Friday and uh, he, he missed the practice qualifying session came out on Saturday at Lynn is the young baby at home. So we offer our congratulations once again. Well, the two of the double zero are crossing each other over in front of them racing really hard giving them opportunity to get up there and pounce as well. Taylor Gray making a pass on uh, Justin Algar up ahead of these guys. We're just bragging them up. We got keep going it sounds like our cheers are working but uh, he's a he's this is a remarkable for him and remarkable action across the racetrack there's some really good battles here guys yeah I always said Richmond is the the racetrack if you're a purist if you love old school pure racing Richmond is that racetrack for you where you have to manage your tires a strategy that that is in there for the drivers but also the crew chiefs and, and how they call this race uh, you know running too hard paying that penalty you know it, it, it just seems like it's one of those races that the smart guy wins a lot of times and it's not quite the hammer track like you see a lot of these repays where you just got to go as hard as you can every single lap you can't do that here and I think if you're an old school race fan, this is the type of racing you would love. On board here with Haley Deegan. If you go back up to the top five with nine to go on the stage, I want to highlight the ages of these drivers. Eric Amarola is leading. He's 40 years old. But if you look behind him, Chandler Smith is 21. Sam Mayer is 20. Taylor Gray is 19 and then another veteran and Justin Allgaier who's 37. That's quite a discrepancy. It is yes. all over the place. <laughs> no one really in the middle. Yeah and Eric's doing a phenomenal job. He's, he's all the way up to three and a half second lead and we talked about that at the start of this run uh, how we had those cars side by beside Justin Allgaier Chandler Smith and, and those guys are now starting to pay for it right Sam Mayer passing Chandler Smith the whole time Eric Almirola was just taking care of his car Joey right now we, you know this third stage can get interesting because now you have Sam Mayer who just cr crawled up into the second place shows he has a really good long run car might put a little bit more pressure on Eric in the third stage and here's what I would say about Sam Mayer we talk about the troubles that they faced early in the year with those DNFs getting involved in accidents came in behind the eight ball on points but he finished fifth in stage one gets stage points here he is running second in stage two an opportunity to get nine more stage points that is how you climb the ladder in the standings when you've had a problem is delivering in the stages and he's getting it done here today his teammate Justin Allgaier back there in fifth Regan. Well, and Adam, he's fading just a little bit. They had problems with the drive off the corner, spinning the rear tires on the initial runs of the race. They thought they had made that better. As an early report, this run was that it was better. He was just too tight across the middle. Well, it's ear detect. It is eared its ugly head again. He is spinning the tires all the way down the straightaway. Said the left rear feels like it's completely gone. Brad and Joey, when that left rear is gone here, it's not fun. <laughs> he's done. Oh. But he was loose to start the run, yes, and he was running it hard as well. Yep. And, and, and like we said eventually you're going to have to pay the piper on this one and he, he's definitely doing that towards the end of this run luckily for for Justin there's only four laps to go in this thing oh he's counting them down too he says please end this remember when Logan Bearden had a spin making his debut look at the 14 he is just outside the top 10 and racing around some of the best in the business in the Xfinity series great job for this young driver now I don't know but did he put tires on when he spun out there you go I would there assume go. Yeah. that was probably why yes he did uh, on lap 98 he put tires on so you yeah, know he's got 20 laps or so newer tires and than the cars he's racing so he's capitalizing on that let him have his fun Joey let him have that fun <laughs> still doing a I good was job. explaining how he drove through the whole field <laughs> <laughs> good still you, good <laughs> Two to go, stage two for Eric Almirola. He's looking pretty unstoppable right now, guys. Running really smart, putting himself in all the right positions. Good battle here for sixth as well. 
Al Geyer, Corey Heim, who's kind of rallied a little bit. We, we saw him fall back in that pit sequence uh, just outside the top 10, and now here he is trying to make his way back in the top five. I mean, looking to get a couple, a couple more points right here in the final lap of the stage for Corey Heim trying to get Justin Al Geyer. You see, he just Justin just can't throttle up on the exit. You see, he made all his gains on the exit there. Eric Almirola, one stage win in Xfinity competition coming into today, but he's going to get the sweep. And this will be the third time in 2024 a driver has swept both stages. Neither or none of those drivers have gone on to win the race. And back behind the mayor is second. Chandler Smith, Taylor Gray, Corey Heim, the top five. And Bearden able to get by Williams for the final spot in the top 10 to end stage two. 150 laps in the books here at Richmond. It's been the Eric Almirola show so far. When we had the promo last week that said Logano and Keselowski would be in the booth here at Richmond, I said the dynamic duo is back. We're Bradley back. and Joseph. <laughs> uh, my dancing skills have not improved. For those that might be wondering. <laughs> Evidently, in this shot, your razor <laughs> had broken. Yes. <laughs> Tomorrow on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series, including Bradley and Joseph here in Richmond, a rare Easter Sunday night race. The pre-race kicks things off, 6 Eastern, then engines fire at 7. It's all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. You didn't look like Blaney. No. Being no. non-shaven there. No. But, that, you know. that was He's not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was before Mr. Penske gave him a waiver. I don't know. I, di I didn't get that waiver. <laughs> did you negotiate I for did that? Not. That must be in his contract. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. Well, I got a clean shave today, and uh, I'm enjoying the race up here, guys. I always love being here in the booth. Uh, I know, Joey, you're up here all the time. I enjoy coming up here and talking about races, and I, I don't know what else to do on a Saturday afternoon <laughs> to do this at this point. So I, I've enjoyed it, and the race in here at Richmond is – about as fun as it gets as the pits are open everybody will come down and get four set four goodyear tires and um have one set left after this eric Almirola is looking to maintain the lead regan that's an absolutely what he's looking to do right now brad as far as the car it is good for him right now the entry and exit went away just a little bit more than he wanted to that run getting a little bit free at the end of the 81 of chandler smith his biggest struggle is rear grip the front end is numb also but he needs some help with the rear grip josh how about this debut for the 19 of taylor gray fourth in stage number two he said that car fired off good got a little loose towards the end of that run and then for the one of sam mayer said that car was solid overall started to lose the tires towards the end he said if you make any adjustments just a little bit tighter for me mentioned maintaining position race off pit road once again the 20 team delivers contact coming out of the pits there Taylor Gray, Sam Mayer, plus one for Gray, plus three for Austin Hill. My math says on the day, the 21 has gone plus 11 in wow. their two pit stops. Oh. Chandler Smith lost the couple. Here's what we were talking about. Boom. Ooh, that's a big hit. Final stage in the Toyota Care 250 when we return. NASCAR Xfinity Series making their 78th appearance at Richmond Raceway. First short track race of 2024. Doing so on Easter weekend. Look at our stage point breakdown. Mention Eric Almirola gets the sweep, trying to become the first driver this year to sweep the stages and pull into victory lane. Sam Mayer, great afternoon. Chandler Smith. Justin Allgaier also scoring a bunch of points. Let's go back to the exit of pit road after stops and watch Taylor Gray and Sam Mayer get connected. Yeah, big contact here. And look at all the damage on Mayer. Yeah, it's a fair amount of damage there. It looks like he's behind the tire, so it should be okay, I hope. Almirola, Mayer, front row for the restart. Final stage at Richmond. Mayer with a solid launch. Oh, the and there you see the right off the yep. bat. Ooh. And that's from that damage on Pitt Road. Chandler Smith coming through to third. Restarts under review. It, it looked like maybe Chandler Smith won just a little bit early on the outside. Let's see uh, what NASCAR thinks here. That's a lot of rubbing on, on the left front of Sam Mayer. I mean, he's start of yes. the season's been so tough for him. He's showed speed and he's in position to win the race right now or to possibly win the race. And 
I don't know if that one's going to hold there, Bradley. Oof. I'm glad we don't have to decide. Here, we're going to watch the restart real quick. What I want to pay attention to is this car right here, Chandler Smith. Did he go a little bit early? Sam Mayer on uh, that outside Sam line. Mayer. Sam Mayer, I'm sorry. Restart, yeah, that, that's all too good. close to call for me. So NASCAR is going to give it all clear as well. Mayer dodges one bullet, no penalty on the restart. Now, what happens with that damage in the tire? We'll keep an eye on it. It almost looks like it might be getting a little bit better. Oh, oh it's no, it's flat. flat. It's flat. Flat, 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 flat. Well, he's going to have to limp around here for a lap. He just missed pit road as it's the worst place that tire could have gone flat. Luckily, he didn't hit the wall, but he's got to get all the way around here. Sam Mayer having a great day. Top five, stage one. Top five, stage two. Scored a bunch of stage points, exactly what he needed. But now problems, and the race for the lead is on. Teammates going at it. Chandler Smith inside of Eric Almirola, the 81 out front at Richmond. There is action everywhere on this racetrack as Sam Mayer gets to pit road. You have to wonder, this, this run here, Joey, is one of the longest runs of the race. Is Eric Almirola really saving his tires? They've only got one set left, right? I, I would think so. They got one set of tires left. There is a couple ways to play this. You could split this run in half and pit under green. That's going to be the fastest if it runs green the whole way. And if you do that, it's actually not that long of a run. But if the caution comes out, you're in trouble. Race is over, yep. You'd be out of tires. But left side tires on Sam Mayer's car really cost. So he's going to lose at least two laps, maybe even three laps here. Yeah, it's going to take him out of contention. Uh, such a bummer for him. Nothing he could have done. He's rolling down pit road, and, and uh, the 19 just drives right into his door. No, nothing he can do there. And unfortunately, that's going to cost us a top 30 finish probably. Haley Deegan back in the pack. Some good action shots here. Corey Heim again had drove up to the top five. Lost some spots here in the restart and, and on pit road trying to recover back from that. He's got one of the fastest cars. Uh, and we saw him really take off at the end of that run. So he's hoping this thing goes, you know, 90 some laps straight here, Joey. Yeah. And there's Sam Mayer back on track, being scored 32nd, two laps down. Yeah, and he says he's got you know, a little bit newer tires. That, that's the difference. We just went back green not too long ago. I was say, they haven't been out there that long, and already you see yes. the difference. That's how much, I mean, 8, 10 laps on tires is a really big deal. And he doesn't here even have been. four new tires. I think they only took laps. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, it's yeah. even, even crazier. It does look like they were able to fix it to where it's not smoking anymore. Here's Corey Heim passing the, the 19, Taylor Gray. You see all the, the rubber is off the right side tire on Taylor Gray's car. That had to do some uh, some damage to that. Maybe just cosmetic, but uh, hopefully just cosmetic and not the suspension, but uh, hard to tell. That was big contact. But he too has gone in the wrong direction since the restart, talking about Taylor Gray. I'm trying to complete the pass. Parker Kligerman, last car inside the top 10. Just in front of him, the rookie Jesse Love. Yeah, Taylor Gray, minus nine since the restart in, in that contact we saw. Yeah, Sam Mayer, just to touch on it one more time. He's back to 30 seconds, two laps down. After that incident, he was three down. He got one lap back there when he passed Chandler Smith. Riley Herbst at one time was inside the top five. He's now seventh and has company from our pole setter, Parker Retzloff. You know, if you're Parker and you go out and get your first career pole, you'd love to finish the deal and, and win. But the bottom line is a, a top five is a great day for them. A top ten is exactly where they need to be. When you look at where they are and the balance of their program, and he's taking care of the car. And when he needed to give, he has. And now here we are, 79 to go, and he's in position to capitalize on what would be his third top 10 finish of the year. Let's take you side by side. 79 remaining at Richmond. Chandler Smith in front of his teammate, Eric Almirola. Allgaier Hill, Custer complete the top five. Did you see that? Hear that? Feel that.
Is this how you prove you earn the crown? Is in his DNA. How you shut up the haters? I love it. And with the heat? Who's gonna make the move? It's gonna be a must win. Is this a shooting star? Rock star. Superstar. Okay, okay. Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? When I was your age, we never had anything like this. What, Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi that works all over the house, even the basement. The basement? So I can finally throw that party and invite Shannon Barnes. Dreams do come true. Xfinity gives you reliable Wi-Fi with wall-to-wall -wall coverage on all your devices, even when everyone is online. Maybe we'll even get married one day. I wonder what I'll be doing. Probably still living here with mom and dad. Fast, reliable speeds right where you need them. That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi on the Xfinity 10G network. This is Ford Truck Month. With amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks, make way for the event that only comes around once a year. Featuring the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. Get ready and get to Ford Truck Month. See your Ford dealer today for incredible offers on the new 2024 Ford F-150, only during Ford Truck Month. Honey. Honey. NyQuil Severe Honey, powerful cold and flu relief with a dreamy honey taste. NyQuil Honey, the honeylicious nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, fever, best sleep with a cold medicine. So you're telling me this bounce pass gets us into the Creation Museum too? Yep, how cool is that? What are we waiting for? Let's go! Whoa, is that a Mastodon? I think so! This is gonna be awesome! Exclusively on Fox Station. The evidence that's come out is very compelling. The only thing worse than being accused of a crime is knowing you're guilty. They were as unlikable a pair of defendants as you'll ever see. None of you guys are 21, right? I am not drinking a little. I'm drinking a lot. All part of Fox Justice. Sign up now and get your first year of Fox Nation for $29.99. America is streaming. This is the make or break moment knowing you're guilty. They were as unlikable a pair of defendants as you'll ever see. None of you guys are 21, right? I am not drinking a little. I'm drinking a lot. All part of Fox Justice. Sign up now and get your first year of Fox Nation for $29.99. America is streaming. This is the make or break moment. Knowing you're guilty. They were as unlikable a pair of defendants as you'll ever see. None of you guys are 21, right? I am not drinking a little. I'm drinking a lot. All part of Fox Justice. Sign up now and get your first year of Fox Nation for $29.99. America is streaming. This is the make or break moment. Knowing you're guilty. They were as unlikable a pair of defendants as you'll ever see. None of you guys are 21, right? I am not drinking a little. I'm drinking a lot. All part of Fox Justice. Sign up now and get your first year of Fox Nation for $29.99. America is streaming. This is the make or break moment. And uh, you know what? For all those people who say we're not athletes, <laughs> boom, right there. We can throw. <laughs> it's a pretty impressive throw. Um, you know, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. I want to hear Dawson Cram's radio on this. What happened with the 35 there, Dawson? Kind of crossed my nose on exit. I just went to carry tires down the front stretch. I let him go at the start finish line and he started spinning. I only pushed him for like two seconds. Well, it was two seconds too many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we need. A, I wish he had a little better angle of, of exactly how that that all happened, but uh, got him a little too much. Yep, I think there's some explaining to do there. Beyond that, we're in a critical juncture of this race, guys. They have one set of tires left in the pits. Pits are going to open here pretty soon, and I am so glad right now that I am not a crew chief in the NASCAR Xfinity Series because. I if you pit here and another yellow comes out, this race is over if somebody else puts tires on when you don't have any left. Yeah, you got to think this is a split call. I mean, it's there's no right or wrong answer at this point. You, you don't know how it's going to play out. If you run 50 laps from here and there's a caution with 
20 so or so laps to go and you got no tires left, you're not going to win. But you got these scuffs, right? We're, we're seeing in the pylon. It's been 23 laps since they pitted. A few of those under caution. So you take these off, you save them in case you get the late caution, and then you run on stickers. I'm just throwing it out. We're all, you, yeah. you should see I'm our not, faces I'm not, right now. I'm not <laughs> suggesting that's the best policy. I'm just presenting the options. Pits are still close. We're, we've got another lap or two to figure it out, which these crew chiefs are, are really biting their nails right now. <sighs> well, this is a great time for us to compare. Yeah. Let's do the bumper throws. cover Olympics, right? Now that's the deck lid. Oh, yeah. That still is. counts. Own yeah, that's right. Yeah. Deck lid, bumper cover, parts and pieces from the rear of the car. A lot heavier, though. It's a lot heavier piece, so you got to put that into consideration. But Joey, he had to, Joey Gase had to run down, find the car, throw it, and hit it. Hard. Hard. Very I, technical. Know, I, if we're saying who did it better, uh, it's a close one. But I'm going to take Joey. Joey Gase, definitely, the, the difficulty level of what he just accomplished was pretty tough. It was gutsy. Mm. I, At I, least he wore his helmet, though. I do like that. The, the, the smart, <laughs> smart. The big difference here is going to be, I don't think NASCAR was upset at Justin Allgaier. I think they might get upset at Joey Gase. Now they're returning it right here. Thank you. Sign it, auction it for charity. I think that's getting returned to the, the NASCAR hauler, which is usually not a good sign when you're <laughs> wondering if you're going to get in trouble or not, if it makes its way to the principal's office. Andy Street, you saw there on the pit box, crew chief for Austin Hill, running fourth. Pits are open. Here we go. Moment of uh, truth here. Big decision to be made. Here they come. Justin Algar. Oh, it's blitz. Stay out. It splits. Mixed bag. Allgaier stayed out. So did Cole Custer. Here they are, Regan. Eric Omarola, when the caution cut out, came out and said he thought it was too early. Obviously, he got overruled. Needs a little bit of adjustment for grip right here. And the 81 of Chandler Smith, they changed their plan. Originally, it was plan two, which must have been to stay out. They went to plan four, which was to go ahead and pit. Josh. And for the 21 of Austin Hill, they elected to come in. Austin was complaining that he starts sliding those fronts way too much and still tight across the middle. So the decision to come in and pit now and get those tires. We have some entertainment coming our way. Old sure tires do. versus new tires. Oh, my goodness. Teams rooting for a caution. Others that would like to see it go green. And this wow. is where it, it becomes a lot of fun. When we talked about Richmond and being the purest of races, that's what this is all about right now. There's no telling how this is going to play out, but it's going to be fun to watch. Two veterans out front that have combined to win here three times, Allgaier and Custer. Sixth caution of the day. Joey Gase not happy and showing his frustration at Austin Cam. Strategy could go a long way in deciding who wins the race here at Richmond. Under caution for the sixth time today. Here's what happened. Well, we're going to look here. We've got a, uh, we found a camera angle of the four car Dawson Cram hitting the back with Joey Gase pretty late down the back stretch. And that's what Joey's fired up about. That's going to get him loose and he's not going to be able to save this thing before turn one, Joey. No, no, he was very sideways at that point. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame him for being mad about that. Dawson Cram on the receiving end of it. Top 14 drivers stayed out. Front row, Allgaier Custer. And this is going to be a show right here, guys, with the top 14 on old tires. Everybody behind them on new tires. Chandler Smith on the outside of three. He's going to try to pass them all here as fast as he can, get the lead and run away. And he will get there with that much newer tires. He's going to get there pretty quickly. And these guys up front, they're hoping it runs 30, 40 laps and the caution comes out. Custer gets the lead outside lane. Now, what you don't want right now, if you're one of the cars on new tires, you do not want to cause a yellow. You don't want a yellow, period, but you certainly don't want to cause it. So you've got to be really careful working your way through this traffic. Chandler Smith up to ninth. Regan. Joey, G Joey Gates checked and released from the infield care center. Joey, we saw the contact going down the front straightaway. Was there anything else that led to that contact prior? I think him just not having his head screwed on right. You know, I gave the kid his first opportunity ever in Xfinity, and uh, I know Johnny Davis is in the business of wrecking race cars, and we're definitely not. We're small teams and racing hard for the lucky dog, and apparently he just didn't know how to lift. So uh, maybe his throttle stuck. I don't know. Thanks, Joey. Well, you can certainly understand the uh, the hard feelings there. 
Absolutely. What do tires mean? Chandler Smith has worked his way to fifth. Yeah. Outside of Parker Retzloff. And I keep saying this, if the caution comes out late, the roles will be reversed for Chandler Smith. As quickly as he's driving through the field, the double zero, the seven, the 98, the 31, all these guys, when they put tires on, it's going to look the complete opposite. If they get the opportunity to do it, that's the big question right now. Nobody knows what will happen here. This is really the race. The race right now is the 81 and the 20 car. There's no way these guys are not going to prevail against the double zero Cole Custer, the seven of Justin Allgaier. They're, they're making passes so fast right here with new tires. But what you're watching here is the battle between the 81 and 20. And, and why that is, is they're on equal tires. And they're going to they're going to make these passes. The question will be after they make these passes, if there's no yellow, who's going to make the best run here? Yeah, and, and that's why you see Chandler Smith. And you got to get through this traffic as quickly as possible. Get yourself up front and run away from the 20, because if it does run green, that's that's the guy you're racing. Top four that pitted all in the top 10. I mentioned Smith, Almirola, Corey Heim is up there. Same for Jesse Love. On board with Heim now as Smith goes after Allgaier for second. No problem. Chandler Smith has led 17 laps today. Led 83 here a year ago. Got his first career victory. And he's going to be back on point as we see 59 to go. The fresher tires get him to the front. Smith around Custer 81 is on the point one more time. And we see right back there, Eric Amarola. He's three cars behind him right now. He's got to pass those cars and still run them down. And Chandler Smith just passed the 20 right before that last caution. So he's got a fast race car. Yep. How much tire did he use? We, we can't tell from in the booth, but that's the question. How much tire did he use making all these passes so quickly? There's still a lot of laps to go, 59 laps left. Austin Hill in the 21, another one of those drivers that elected to come down pit road has worked his way to the top 10. Same for Parker Kligerman. He made the stop. He's 11th right now. Shane Van Gisbergen, he stayed out. He's one of those guys that uh, is pulling for another caution to come here. Doesn't probably want it right now. They'd probably like for this yell, if they're going to get it, they'd probably like it for it to come with 20, 30 laps to go. Yeah, you get another 10 to 12 laps. I think, I mean, at that point, you're, you're going to be sitting pretty. Eric Almoro has run down Cole Custer. And he's still in striking range, right, of Chandler Smith. He's going to end up being about a second and a half back after this pass for second place. So he's going to be able to keep him honest. The top two that pitted are now 1-2 on track after driving through those that stayed out. And restarting back. Uh, outside the top 15. Outside, yeah, outside the top 15. Yeah, top 14 had stayed on track. Yeah. Jesse Love up to six. Corey Heim seventh. Other drivers that made pit stops. Yeah, those guys had to pass 12 cars. 12 to 13 cars to, to get back to where they're at right now. Taylor Gray playing that same strategy to come down pit road, making his first ever start. He's rallied back up to 11th. And you see Bubba Pollard on track behind him. He's had so much thrown at him today, making his first ever start. Great in practice, first driver out in qualifying. Such a difficult chore. He has to come from the back, but stayed on the lead lap kept himself in the game and a strategy play is going to put him in position for a top 10 here see justin algar and cole custer battling each other they have the same tires so that could be a battle for later in the race on the board so you can get a better idea of where everybody's at on tires. Uh, Justin Algaier is the, the first car on the oldest tires. And you can see uh, all the way back to the top 20 where everybody's at on tires. And what you're looking for is the guys with the least amount of laps on their tires. They're the ones who are going to be running up to the field here through the course of this run. See Jesse Love, one of those that made a pit stop coming down 20 laps ago. He's able to get to the outside of Cole Custer here. 
you see, I mean, for some of them, it's taken a long time to get this far, right? 20 laps or so to, to, to pass up there. And it's not like they're blowing their doors off right now either. I mean, they're quite a bit faster, don't be wrong, but not like seconds faster. But Brad, you brought it up. This is a solid point you brought up, is that you know the, the last thing these guys that just put tires on is a caution. So they need to race each other very, very smart, which makes the likeliness of a caution coming out not very good anymore, right? Because yes. they're going to be like, man, just, we can't wreck here because our race will be over. So they back it down a notch. They don't, you're not beating each other's doors off and all. It has the feeling right now that this thing could go long. Yes. You know, there, there could be a lot of psychology classes on race car drivers. And, and we talk about this a lot. <laughs> uh, but and it, crew chiefs, right? And crew chiefs. But what's really interesting is how the field all kind of gets on board with the strategy and changes the way they're racing when you see situations like this. We saw it a, a few weeks back in the Bristol Cup race when we were running out of tires and, and the whole field just gets really smooth and slows down and takes care of their tires when they're almost out. Where before that, they ran as hard as they could. So you start to see the drivers adapt to the situation, almost like a school of fish. And they're all adapting at the same time and, and not getting themselves in trouble. It's really, really interesting to see. Your analogies have been incredible today. <laughs> you didn't have that one on your card either, I, did you? I mean, fish wasn't out there. I had to go to my third bingo card to get all this <laughs> stuff in. But what you're seeing, like, from... from Watching this on camera and watching in the booth, you're seeing that the drivers give each other a little bit more room, Joey. You're seeing all these different things happen because they know they do not want to cause a yellow if they are the ones that have new tires. And to your point, that just changes the dynamics of the race. Now, on the flip side of that, if you're one of those cars that stayed out, well, <laughs> you're really wanting a caution. Yes. Might be the opposite. Joe Gibbs Racing having a great day. They've won here at Richmond 11 times, Chandler Smith leading. Eric Almirola won both stages today. He's second. Good effort for Taylor Gray. Of course, Sheldon Freed had the problems. We talked to him earlier. And when you look at short tracks, I mean, not just here at Richmond, but across the board, Martinsville, Bristol, it really, in recent years, has been all about Junior Motorsports and Joe Gibbs Racing. They've won seven of the last nine here, those two teams, and 15 of the last 18 overall. And look at the laps led, 3,600 out of the 4,800 run. I mean, it's just complete domination for these two organizations. And they've done it again today when you look at the laps led for Almirola, the Chandler Smith, and Justin Allgaier. It does seem like one of those racetracks. Once you get your head wrapped around how they go yeah. fast around here, whether it's a driver or the, the team with the setup, it, it seems to last forever once yes. you, get, once you yeah. get it. Corey Heim, not from Joe Gibbs Racing, but driving a Toyota, and he's been outstanding today. Gets his way around Jesse Love. He's now third. The cars on the older tires, to your point, Joey, have hung on just a little bit better than they thought they, they would. They're, they're almost all outside of the top 10, with the exception of Justin Algar. Love a power into the top 10. Working over Riley Herbst for the tenth position or ninth position, and he gets it. The fresh faces getting it done today at Richmond. Taylor Gray, Bubba Pollard, never raced Xfinity before this afternoon. Sixth and ninth, both in the top ten. Logan Bearden ran his way into the top ten on those fresher tires at the end of stage two. He's now 26th. We'll go side by side with 41 laps remaining. Smith leads Almirola, Heim, Love, Hill, the top five. It's the NASCAR Xfinity Series from Richmond. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. Yeah. Woo! I love it. Woo! Whoa. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> what are we, Steve? Winners. I love you. 
Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Tourists. Tourists that turn into scientists. Tourists taking photos that are analyzed by AI. So researchers can help life underwater flourish. At SafeLight, we'll take care of fixing your windshield. But did you know we can take care of your insurance claim? That means less stress for you. Thanks. My pleasure. Have a good one. You too. Schedule today at SafeLight.com. SafeLight Repair, SafeLight Replace. NASCAR fans, the time is now to turn your love of racing into free tickets, merchandise, VIP experiences, and much, much more. Rack up fan rewards points by watching races at home, playing fantasy, completing challenges, and visiting tracks. Then redeem your points for epic prizes. You are in the driver's seat. What are you waiting for? Sign up for the free NASCAR Fan Rewards loyalty program today at nascar.com slash fan rewards. Grace for impact. It's Friday Night Smackdown on Fox. Listen to this place. Crowd is witnessing history tonight. Tap into network television's greatest spectacle. As the baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. All new Friday Night Smackdown. Sponsored by Progressive at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Did you see that? Hear that? Feel that? Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? Just over 30 laps to go in the Toyota Care 250. It's the NASCAR Xfinity Series racing in Richmond, Virginia with Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano. I'm Adam Alexander, Josh Sims, Regan Smith on pit road. Chandler Smith in charge of the field. His advantage, 1.6 seconds over his teammate Eric Almirola. Here's an interesting fact. Eric Almirola won both stages today. It's the third time it's happened this year. The previous two times, the driver that won the stages, his teammate went on to win the oh, race. No. Mm. It's, it's playing out again, is it not, with Chandler Smith leading the way? Well, still a long ways to go. We don't know how hard Chandler run, ran. We don't know how hard Eric's running. Uh, still, you know, a long ways to go. A lot of traffic to work through. And we could get Close a caution right that allows some drivers to pit, and that would change everything. Absolutely. And uh, right now is like prime time. If there's a caution for those guys that stayed out, this is it. Right now is where they want the caution. And it could happen as the leaders get to these lap cars or cars about to go down a lap. They run each other really hard, racing for lucky dogs. Those type of things could cause a caution. Something to watch out for, for sure. But Chandler Smith, I mean, we, we talked about it at the start of the race. This has been a great track for him. He's having a terrific season. He's doing all the things he needs to do. Uh, this would be, you know, he's already got a win on the season, but this would be a statement. Is he making his way through traffic right here? Eric Almirola, 1.3 seconds back. He's kind of hovered around this 1.7, 1.3 range. You see, he's made a little bit of time here in this lap traffic that, uh, Chandler Smith in, but Jeb Burton one lap down. He would love to get a caution, get the free pass. This is our Celsius onboard camera. And Jeb's one of those guys on the older tires, right? So he less pitted at lap 155, where these guys pitted around lap 179. So they got about 24 uh, lap fresher tires on the leaders than Jeb does. Get here, just throttle jockey and that thing on the exit. Just put a pedal under three there. That's the challenge of driving one of these cars. And there you saw, Joey, to, to your point, they're, they're lapping cars, the leaders are, and they're starting to slide around the, and not just the leaders, but the lap cars. And this is when trouble can really happen. But Jeb Burton wants the caution because he wants to get the free pass. His teammate, Parker Retzloff, wants the caution because he's one of those that didn't pit, has the fresher tires. He would love to come down and take advantage. Right now, the driver that started on the pole is 13th in the race. Good battle here with Josh Williams. And we've seen this story before, right, Adam? Where it, that caution came out and everyone feels like it's too early and 
people end the race with a set of tires in the pits. <laughs> it's funny, I was down in the garage earlier today, and, and I said, I surveyed everybody. I said, what do you think? 20, 25 laps into the final stage, you get the caution. Is that when you pit? And every every crew chief I talked to locked up, and they're like, ah, I, I want it to be right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Murphy's Law, 25 laps in, you get the caution. It's decision time. And now you have to live with the consequences. It's like you knew, Adam. <laughs> but it's it's not over till it's over here. We could get a yellow at any time. There's Taylor Gray in the fifth position. He's rooting for this thing to stay green, making his first ever start. And if he can come out and finish fifth, man, what a tremendous job that would be. And we see a green flag pit stop. Cole Custer coming in. So they said, you know what? We're not going to wait on a caution. We're going to come down, get the fresh tires, and try to make it up. Regan? Well, and Adam Carter, them going ahead and pitting right now. Cole is fearful. He had a tire getting ready to come apart. Wasn't 100% certain that it would make it to the end. They ended up having to come to pit road. So in that situation, if you think you might have a problem, you got to go ahead and come and make it happen. Not totally a strategy call, but a safety call for the driver that won the championship last year and is on a ride of top five finishes. And he's still going to make a lot of ground back if the yellow doesn't come out. With these new tires, he, he, he's going to lose a lap for sure, maybe even two here. We're trying to figure out where he comes back on the racetrack. He had two down, it looks like. Uh, but he's going to make that back really quick. I don't know if he'll get back to where he was running, uh, but these new tires are going to be a pretty big advantage. We saw this happen last year to Justin Allgaier, where they felt like maybe they had a problem, and so they said, let's just cut our losses, go ahead and make the stop, get the fresher tires, and see what we can make up. And he was going to do an unbelievable job of driving back through the field. Unfortunately for Justin, the caution came out, and it kind of spoiled their play. Here's Seven Radio speaking of Justin Allgaier. Yeah, it's a spotter he's saying, hey, some cars are starting to pay. He, he's queuing off of Cole Custer when he pitted, not knowing the full story that we heard about him coming in for the uh, possible tire going down. Um, but he does bring up a good point. Remember, we saw this earlier with Sheldon Creed. These guys have not had to run super long on tires. Maybe the tires will start to come apart. And that would throw a whole new wrench into the plan. Yeah, but if, if you're going to pit two under green, you got to give it plenty of time to play out and work, right? Now we're down to 22 yeah, laps to go. laps to re fully recover for sure. Yeah, at this point, you know, if, if you didn't pit under green at this point, you've made your bed. You are banking on a caution late. And here comes Cole Custer. He's going to get one of his laps back here. Yeah, this gets him to one lap down as he goes around race leader Chandler Smith. Which so, is key. If you're two laps down and the caution comes out, that's that's the death penalty right there. That's that's going to be tough to to be able to recover from two laps down. So Cole Custer right here, two seconds a lap faster than the leaders. Man, he is just flying through there on those tires. So you know, if if he maintains that, which he's not going to, because the tires are going to fall off, he would go win the race. But the tires will fall off, and it'll go to maybe a half second to a second faster. Coming up next, it's an MLB opening weekend showdown between two of the most explosive teams in the league is Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves take on Bryce Harper and the Phillies right here on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Looking forward to baseball. Talked a lot about Taylor Gray today up in the top five. He's a big Braves fan, so we'll hop out of the car and check it out here on FS1. The speed difference <laughs> of Cole Custer right now on his new tires is remarkable as he's just blowing by cars. But I, like you said, Brad, I, Not enough I'd be laps. interested yep. to see where he gets back to Justin Allgaier, right? Because Justin's staying out. What would the difference be? Five miles per hour difference on yep. these tires for Custer over now Chandler. That's everywhere Smith. around the track, he's five mile. That's not just one spot. Right. It's five mile an hour or every bit around the racetrack. So that's that's really impressive. And that's average mile an hour around the racetrack. Taylor Gray continues to work. Jumps in front of fellow rookie Jesse Love. Custer around his teammate.
I love our Fox graphics here that can really compare it. So here's Cole Custer on new tires against our leader, Chandler Smith. And this is what, when we say five mile an hour faster over the course of a lap, this is what it looks like. So it's a great representation. Top left, Custer's coming back around and trying to get himself on the lead lap. Going by Sammy Smith, who's on the lead lap, scored ninth. Sammy right now a good bit back from race leader Chandler Smith so still a lot of ground to make up for Custer but if it stays green he's going to pay some dividends on that pit stop I do believe especially if you consider that could have lost the tire which would have really taken them out of contention to have any kind of a finish today. Now Chandler Smith the leader he's still running really fast he was at the last lap a tenth or two faster than Eric Almirola. Uh, so I guess he didn't burn his tires off when he was getting through that traffic, Joey. Yeah, I guess not. You know, it, it, it's always harder for the leader to get through, you know, cars that are trying to stay on the lead lap. They're racing them hard. They're trying to stay in, you know, the lead lap or stay in that lucky dog position. And it shows the speed that Chandler Smith's got in that race car and how good of a job he's done saving his tires because he's doing that and still driving away from Eric Amarola. Goes by A.J. Allmendinger putting him a lap down. That means there's 13 cars on the lead lap. As we highlight Bubba Pollard. Bubba's done a good job. You know, jump. we said it, how hard it is to jump into a car like this. And now, you know, to run into the top 10 in your first race, a track that's challenging like Richmond, he's got to be happy about that. So you look at the notable debuts for drivers and tell you what here at Richmond, Ryan Blaney, seventh, Cole Custer, talked about him during our practice qualifying show earlier today, was driving for Junior Motorsports. Noah Gregson was incredible when he came here for the very first time. So I was uh, in that race with Ryan Blaney's debut, and he was so impressive. Uh, I left and called Roger Penske and said, uh, yeah, you need to hire this guy. And a few months later, he was driving my truck and had a contract with Roger Penske. So that goes to show you a good debut race means a lot. Or can mean a lot. He's still guys. getting residuals on that. He's no, a NASCAR I, Cup I, champion I'm not, now. But uh, you know, he, he did the work, not me. But uh, it, it certainly is impressive. Bubba Bauer uh, just keeps working his way forward here, up to seven. Yeah, he's been working on Parker Kligerman here for the last 15 laps or so, trying to get that. There's Austin Hill right there in front of him. And I think this is just some short track racing right here where he's done a good job at saving his tires. He, these late this model is guys, game. this is it. Because you think about it, they run these 100 lap features or whatever, and, and they got to run the same set of tires the whole time. Yes. So they have to manage their car. And that's where they've gotten better than, I think, some of the Xfinity guys that don't have to save tires very often anymore. And you kind of yep. fall out of that 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 skill set a little bit because you don't do it all the time and that's where his shining moment is coming through right but now. But think about the contracts and I, I would tell this to any young racer you know last week we were in Coda and uh, you, you've got these drivers uh, like Shane Bank is we're going to have all that experience of road course racing big heavy cars and, and stock cars uh, and, and really excel at it and we come to a challenge like Richmond which is kind of a 180 degree challenge right you got to take care of the car take care of the tires having a short track racing background can really pay off and that's what makes it so hard to be a really good NASCAR race car drivers you got to be able to do both you got to be able to run good on those road courses and and find that speed and make pace uh, and then in these situations you got to be able to take care of the tires I mean there's everything and then you have mile and a half tracks that are completely different than what we see here in Richmond she we used to have dirt on the schedule and you had to figure <laughs> out how to do that too it, it, that's what's to me as a race car driver is so attractive about NASCAR racing well we got a slow car one and two Haley Deegan trying to stay out of the way hopefully for Chandler Smith's sake, that does not oh, produce no. a caution. I don't think she's going to get back, guys. I don't think so either. I don't think she's going to get back. This might be our yellow. We saw this late last year. I think it was Jeremy Clements who had a problem, couldn't get all the way back around. It brought out the caution, changed everything. Six to go for Chandler Smith. Oh, it's no going to be really no close power. here. No power. She's going to barely might make, make it out of the pit road. Just barely, oh, Chandler Smith is uh, really smiling. Chandler Smith, a really big fan of Haley Deegan <laughs> right now, getting yes. back to her pit box so we don't get a caution. 
That would have changed everything uh, dramatically. Algar wow. is like, oh, so close. Yes. <laughs> Five remaining at Richmond. Think about Chandler Smith when it comes to Richmond. Two years ago, driving in the Craftsman Truck Series, dominates and wins. Comes back here last year, is a rookie in the Xfinity Series, driving for Colleg, delivers again, won a stage, led more than 80 laps, and picked up the checkered flag. It's four laps away from going back to back. You guys, he's lapped up to 11th place right now. Uh, that's the pace of that car. Now, I know there's some different strategies and tires are different and those type of things. That's why some of these really good cars are going down a lot because they have so many laps under tires. But the point is, he's on rails. Yes, he is. Cole Custer looks like he's going to catch him here in the next few laps to get back on the lead lap. Uh, but a heck of a run for him to drive through the field. For third, two great young drivers, teammates in the truck series. Corey Heim, Taylor Gray. Can't say enough about the job Gray has done here today at Richmond. And these guys right now, end of this run, they are holding on. I mean, really holding on. Two laps to go. Chandler Smith says, I just want to see that white flag. I don't need a caution. Don't need any drama. Don't need a restart. He's lapped all the way up now to, to ninth place. You'll see the white flag this time around. Chandler one Smith lap likes to it. go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Now Chandler Smith loves the white flag, but no one loves it more than all these crew chiefs on pit road who decided to pit. Absolutely, they look like they made the right decision. Richmond's like his second home. It's a Richmond Runaway for Chandler Smith. He leads over 70 laps and in dominating fashion is going to get his second win of 2024. Good job today. Buddy, way to fight that thing. Did a great job. Picker, you guys are awesome today. Really. They did a good job managing this race. Obviously, a fast race car. A lot of different things could happen. But a very solid day for Chandler Smith. Something I want to note about Cole Custer back into the top 10 right there. Just beat Justin Algaier on the last lap. Justin stayed out. Cole Custer took tires. Kind of fun to watch that play out. Chandler Smith wins it. His teammate Eric Almarola is second. Top three, all from Joe Gibbs Racing. The top four, all Toyotas. It's the seventh time Joe Gibbs Racing has gone one, two, three. And it's the 12th time the coach has seen one of his drivers pull into victory lane here in the Commonwealth. Corey Heim, great job in fourth. Second best finish for Sam Hunt Racing here at his home track. Jesse Love, the rookie, finishes fifth, his second top five of the year. Bubba Pollard back to sixth in his debut. Good day for Kligerman. Austin Hill has his top five streak in, but he's top 10 again. Sammy Smith, and we talked about Cole Custer complete the top 10. That's a pretty good burnout. When those tires are going to come apart. Allgaier just outside the top 10. Josh Williams finishes 12th today. It's a great pairing. Chandler Smith, first year at Joe Gibbs Racing with Jeff Mendering, a veteran crew chief who's had success with so many drivers. Third career win for the 21-year-old from Talking Rock, Georgia. Back in the Toyota family and back to victory lane. Let's hear from him, Josh. Chandler Smith, your first career Xfinity Series win came here at Richmond. 
you return and you back it up with another one. What can you say about today's performance? Ah, uh, all glory to God, first and foremost. Easter weekend, tomorrow's single most importantly, probably the most important day in, in all of world history. So make sure to be with your family and, and your kids. If you got kids, uh, speaking of kids, I cannot wait to get and see my kids. Uh, they're here today, my wife, my sons, and I'm, I'm ready to celebrate with them. But never give up, never give up. This car was not good stage one, was a good stage two, but uh, we were able to do some strategy there with our Mobile One GR Supra. And, this thing was fast as Xfinity Internet at the end when it counted. What can you say about the statement that this 81 team is making this season? Two wins, top 10 in every single race. You guys are on one right now. Yeah, uh, all glory to God, man. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be surrounded by all these great men and women at Joe Gibbs Racing. Wouldn't be with the greatest manufacturer, Toyota, back home with them. This is great. I mean, I'm back winning races here consistently on a, on a consistent basis. I think we took over the points lead again today, too. So. Uh, I'm just blessed. I'm beyond blessed. I can't wait to get to victory lane, celebrate with my guys, my wife, my kids. Uh, it's going to be a good day, and then get up tomorrow and go to church. Chandler Smith, your winner at Richmond. Eric Almirola comes home in second place today, part of a Joe Gibbs Racing 1-2-3 finish. I know that's not the position you wanted there. What did you lack at the end of that race? Well, we just got a little bit too loose. Um, the run before that in stage two, when I took off, my car was really, really good, and at the end, just built a little bit tight and that last run for whatever reason I don't know if it's a different set of tires or what but I just I paced myself I let Chandler go and then when I started to try and just creep back to him I didn't have anything to go with I just I, I was too loose in and I couldn't get the throttle down on exit so hate that to, uh, to win both stages and feel like we had the dominant car and then to let it slip away there at the end is, is disappointing but so fun week uh, this weekend coming back to Richmond 18 years after making my first start for coach and um, with he gets us on the car on Easter weekend so it's uh, it's been amazing to see what God's done in my life over the last 20 years since I got that phone call from coach and JD to, to come drive for them and I really wanted to put this thing in victory lane today uh, for them but it's gonna have to wait You've been a big part of Joe Gibbs Racing this year about helping the younger guys. I saw you congratulate Taylor Gray as he got over here. What's it mean to see that one, two, three finish as a company? Well, it's huge. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people just don't realize how much work goes into the organization over the off season to, to get it to where it's at. And, you know, to add a whole fourth team uh, to the organization was a huge undertaking. So just really proud of all the men and women back at the shop at Joe Gibbs Racing and everybody for working so hard to get a four team up and going and to have the speed that we've had every single week. Uh, one of our cars can win every single weekend. So it's a lot of fun to come to the racetrack like this and uh, looking forward to Martinsville. Martinsville is going to be a lot of fun. It's been a great racetrack for Joe Gibbs Racing and one of my favorite racetracks. So we'll go there and uh, try and go one spot better than this weekend. Thanks, Eric. Look at our top 10 from today's race. The stat holds true. You sweep the stages and your teammate gets the trophy. Eric Almirola winning stage one, stage two. Chandler Smith with a win. Chandler Smith average finish this year 3.3. The same for Austin Hill, who was eight this afternoon. Wow. Another solid day. Austin Hill closes out with the top 10. Cole Custer, we talked about just a minute ago. Great rebound from that tire issue to get to the top 10. Taylor Gray, Corey Heim, Jesse Love, all young drivers who delivered big time on the big stage today. Josh? And in Taylor Gray's debut in the Xfinity Series, comes home with a third place finish. First of all, what was this experience like for you? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I can't thank all my Joe Gibbs racing guys enough. They brought me such a fast place of hope, GR Supra, uh, as fast as Xfinity Internet is today. The driver just made too many mistakes to be able to capitalize on such a fast race car. Um, you know, I. Congrats to Chandler for winning the race. It's a really good, uh, really good day for the Gibbs. What did you learn today? We saw the little experience there on pit road, and, and you talk about some mistakes. What can you take away from this as you grow and get better? I mean, a lot of things, right? I mean, you, you saw the little mistakes I made, and it just shows you, you know, the difference, right? You go from truck racing, and you know your pit road's not as crowded. You're not racing as people as tight off pit road, and and you go, you leave pit road, and or you come to the Xfinity Series, or you come for Series is even worse, and you know. You got you're racing people on pit road so much tighter and, and things like that. So I, I need to clean up that on my end. I you know, again apologize to, to the one group in JRM. I obviously that was the last thing I intended was to tear up the race car and ruin their day. So um, again, I apologize to them. But um, you know I, I can't hang my head too low. I mean such a great day for for us. Third place finish for Taylor Gray. Regan. 
And Bubba Pollard comes home, comes home sixth in his Xfinity Series debut. You told me before the race you'd be happy with 10th to 15th. I got to imagine you're very happy right now. Yeah, we, man, I just got us behind in qualifying there and uh, made for a long day. But these guys give me a good race car. Junior Motorsports, Andrew, uh, TJ did a great job on top of the box. And uh, I needed that green flag run just to kind of uh, get in the rhythm. Uh, it, it, it's, it, this place is tough. It's technical. It's probably one of the tougher places I've been to, and I've been to a lot of places. But, yeah, I mean, I went to guys behind. I think, you know, we'd have had a top five, and uh, I'm happy with it. it. I enjoyed it. I had fun, and um, hopefully, hopefully them fans uh, enjoyed it too. So you enjoyed it. You got some experience out there. You figured out the tires, everything you needed to do. Do we get to see you again in one of these, as good as that run was? I hope so. I hope the uh, – Hopefully, we, you know, we can find some sponsorship and uh, maybe go to some different places later on in the year, maybe next year or something. But, yeah, the door's open. If we can have any sponsors jump on board, we'd love to have them. Thanks, Bubba. Nice job. Well, Corey Heim comes home fourth place today. Strong performance from start to finish all around. What can you say about what you guys were able to do? Yeah, just super proud of Sam Hunt Racing. Uh, the Skier and Shira Super was so good throughout the day. Uh, definitely a huge step in the right direction compared to where we've been this year. So uh, I'm super grateful for everyone over at that organization and Toyota Racing. Uh, super, super good feeling just to know that we had a car capable of winning today. Uh, I feel like we have a couple things to clean up. I feel like we didn't have the track position at the end, but um, super grateful for everyone involved and uh, it's a good momentum going forward. You got a number of starts under your belt now in the Xfinity Series. What's the biggest growth for you? What's the biggest thing you've learned over this time? Uh, it's just about reps. You know, with the truck, I've got almost like 50 starts now, and it almost feels like second nature hopping in one of those things. But uh, it's sort of a mental reset getting in an Xfinity car and trying to uh, make this thing go as fast as Xfinity 10G. But um, it's definitely a different world out here, and there's a lot of good drivers. So uh, I've got some work to do myself to get there. Strong run for Corey Heim, Regan. Jesse Love continues to impress in his rookie season, a fifth-place finish today. Jesse, what did you think about this Richmond racetrack, and how challenging was it? It was uh, very, very hard. It was uh, kind of whooped my butt there for a while. Um, but, man, that restart, I was like, if we're going to go as fast as Xfinity Internet, it's going to be right now, because right now, that was going to be, if it did go green, it was going to mean everything. And it's pretty hard to pass here. So, um, you know, we struggled with our wheel and Chevrolet today, like, no doubt. It wasn't, wasn't our best showing, but I feel like, What's made us really good is taking days where we're flat out just not great and just not giving up and, and gambling a little bit and, uh, and coming out on, on you know somewhat better terms than what we could have been. So um, we wanted to run good for my buddy Brent's birthday. We're missing our, our, uh, our guy Don John today. Hope him and his dog are, are doing all right. But, um, but, man, I'm looking forward to coming back, and I think we know what to do different next time because there's definitely work to be done, but uh, we get to go race for 100 grand next week. As you continue to have these good runs, what does that do for your confidence as a rookie when you show up at places that you've never seen before? It's hard, and this has been the hardest place for sure. I'm not, I'm not much for saving tires. My my dirt background isn't very keen to that, so it's hard for me to, to save tires. And it's just like managing the racetrack, just like managing the golf course. It's so hard, and you got to be so disciplined. And I wasn't the best at it today, um, but I'm going to get better. We're going to get our Chevrolet better, and uh, hopefully, going to come back be even stronger. Thanks, Jesse. Jesse Love told me earlier today when I asked him about being at Richmond for the first time, he said it's kind of like going to math class. It's r really hard, but uh, <laughs> I feel like he went to school and passed the test today. A top five means he's one of the four drivers eligible for the dash for cash next Saturday night at Martinsville. This was the qualifier. It'll be Chandler Smith, Eric Almirola, Jesse Love, and Parker Kligerman going for the $100,000. The hat trick at Richmond for Chandler Smith two years ago. Craftsman Truck Series laid it on him. He said, I like this place after winning in the trucks. Came back last year. Racing is a rookie on the Xfinity side, driving for colleague, and he gets it done again, beating John Hunter Nemechek. And this season, didn't win the stage like he did last year, but when the money was on the line late in this race, he gets it done, leading 76 laps, picking up his second win of the year and the third of his career. Impressive today for Chandler Smith. Guys, your final thoughts? Yeah, I thought Chandler did a fantastic job. Obviously, he's taking a liking to Richmond. He knows what he needs in his race car. We talked about it before. Once you get a handle on this place, it just keeps going. The dividend just keeps paying out. And you see that today with Chandler, along with some others with some fun races. Bubba Pollard, I thought that was awesome. Sixth place in your first start here. Pretty cool. 
what stood out to me about Chandler Smith win today was, and, and he said it in his interview, his car was probably not as fast as his teammates at the start of the race. And they, they made some adjustments to it. He gave the right feedback to his team. They were able to maximize his car, maximize his day. Outside of that, one of the guys we didn't talk about, uh, Parker Kligman, with a nice recovery. We saw him in the wall about halfway through right. the race, and, and he gets a, a seventh-place finish. A lot of great stories and a fun race. Ultimately, the strategy at the end was a, a huge difference maker for some of these guys and made a break some days and uh, a lot of action in between. Great job by you two in the booth. We'll see you on track tomorrow. Race day gets us going here on FS1 at 5.30. Over to Fox at 6, 7 Eastern time. It's the Toyota, o Toyota Owners 400 live from Richmond. Baseball's coming up next on FS1. Congratulations to Chandler Smith. He wins it today in the Commonwealth. He's got that short track feel, and we're doing it all again next Saturday night from Martinsville with Regan Smith, Josh Sims on pit road. In the booth, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano. I'm Adam Alexander saying thank you for watching from Richmond. Enjoy your Saturday evening. Happy Easter. Baseball is coming your way next on FS1.